did end up coming on top. And we got a we got a really cool concert going on here. The LJL is really starting to step it up. Yeah, and you know it's really cool to see these uh, regions that maybe you don't hear about as much uh, in the professional League of Legends scene uh, sort of step up their game as the game continues to evolve. Um, you know, places like the Oceanic League and uh, the LJL, these places are, are getting better and better uh, production values as well as players. Uh, we've really seen the game, the players step up their game in the last um, couple of years. Yeah, absolutely. We were starting to see, like, exactly like you said, you know, some of the wildcard teams that came out of some of these regions uh, during the last, uh, what do you call it, the World Championships had a great run. He's making it out of groups for the first time in League of Legends history. And the winner of these guys, they aren't, aren't going to be playing at Worlds necessarily, but they will be playing at the Mid-Season Invitational coming up very soon to represent Japan. Hopefully get a little bit more recognition for the wildcards. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, how these people perform on an international stage, uh, whether whether it's Detonation Focus Me or Rampage Gaming who takes this one. Uh, it's going to be really exciting to see what they can pull out um, later on in the season. Yeah, a lot of people, I remember when Japan was first getting their server, a lot of people were talking about how the only reason why we don't see, you know, Japanese teams competing with the Korean teams in the World Finals and having, you know, a combined server or anything like that was simply because Japan hasn't had their own server. Now, unfortunately, that hasn't quite panned out. We did see Focus Me at the uh, last International Wild Card, Wild Card Tournament, and they did, they did solidly for a new team that's only had their server for about a year. I believe they ended up taking fourth out of about seven teams, but that's... That's a great showing, and it gives them that international experience, and hopefully they'll be able to bring it back and have a great series with us once again today. Yeah, and of course here we see the uh, the stellar introduction videos that uh, Riot Games Japan has been putting out. Um, some really, really cool yeah. player shots and that sort of thing. Why does it? Uh, why does it North America do more of this? It would be so hype. Yeah, right. I mean, we do a little bit. Like, we also, I remember we used to have those, like, trash talk videos uh, <laughs> that were, like, either put out by uh, North America or just, like, the organizations themselves. Those are really fun. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, mean, I guess we do have the, uh, you know, the life of TSM, the life of Cloud9, as, you know, the house tours that we get. We haven't really seen it nearly as much of that from the Japan, Japan scene. Or that could also just be the fact that I don't understand them when I'm watching them, so I tend not to see them very often. But here we go. We're gonna That's be running. True. We're gonna be running through uh, the rosters right now, starting over the rampage. Here comes Evi onto the stage. He had a really good series last time, having some great, uh, great plays on Tom Kench uh, during the last last set that they had with unsold stuff. Uh, you know, Nautilus, Tom Kench, Fizz, Camille. He's had a great season so far, and we're looking forward to what comes out. Tussle's gonna be the next one coming out. The jungler Lee M Moon Young. He's actually coming over from Korea. Uh, he hasn't participated in any major leagues before, but he was just pulled from solo queue. Comes here, uh, joins Rampage here in the finals, and he's had a great season. He was. I remember we were talking yesterday a little bit about the fight between Neo and Tussle, between Unsold Stuff and Rampage, and Tussle mm -hmm. was a very quiet hero, but he was helping to carry the game well. Uh, here we go. Mid lane is Ramune is gonna be coming up. He's been a Syndra one trick almost in you know the professional scene. That's not something you get to see very often. But he's had over half of his games on the season just played on that singular champion, and you know with any luck we'll get to see at least three more of his Syndra games today. But yeah. Yutori Moyashi, this guy is the star of Rampage. He's had so much effect, and we saw yesterday when he got ahead, he carried the game single-handedly. He was so far ahead, 150 CS leads in multiple games, uh, just doing everything going massive but when he's not ahead unfortunately that can really lead rampage to crumbling but what is an adc without a support we're gonna bring out jun jung hyun dara coming over once again from korea and this is one of the people that a lot of people like to talk about when they think of rampage it's yutori and dara working together so well getting such big leads in the laning phase and just carrying it over into the rest of the split or into the rest of the game rather and just allowing yutori to be the yutori he needs to be He's not the Yutori we deserve, but he's the one we need. <laughs> yeah, uh, this team really stepped it up uh, over the series. The best of five that we saw uh, earlier this week um, really clinched out a victory, uh, showed a great mental resilience uh, coming back from the brink of defeat. Uh, they were down 2-1, I believe, uh, before they managed to take their victory. And now 
uh, their opponent's detonation is going to show up here, I would imagine. Um, yeah, absolutely. Here comes Detonation Focus. Me. Now, these guys aren't just a League of Legends team, but this is League of Legends we're watching. Let's get to talking about that. We're going to see a lot of really cool stuff coming out of that. We're going to see, starting off with the top lane, Utapone. In just a moment, this is potentially the most important player on the team. He's had a long run. He's been with this team for at least three years, doing fantastic stuff, originally playing the ADC. I don't know about you, but I know a couple people from over here back before they had their servers actually had a chance to play against him. And even when they're playing with about a 200 ping, he's still a monster to play against. But here we go. He's going to be coming through that smoke. And oh man, what a stunner, isn't he? <laughs> he certainly is uh, a pretty pretty nice looking guy, I have to say. Um, Look at all those things on his chest. I wish I had that many sponsors. I guess I'll just settle for one, but here we go. We're going to come out next. We're going to see Paz coming out from the jungle. Now, this is one of the substitutes for uh, Detonation. He hasn't been playing in a lot of the games recently. Uh, he's been trading off with Shrimp, someone who many people might be aware of from his challenger series and NALCS stints a couple years ago but Paz is going to be taking over Saros the other super celebrated player of the LJL Saros has been having a monstrous game some people calling him the faker of Japan even just being able to bring so many different things to the table he's played eight champions over the 24 games he's had and the most he's played on any one of them is four so he is versatile he can play anything and he can carry on anything as well Right, and then joining us next is going to be Zeros, uh, the AD carry for Detonation Focus Me. Uh, really strong performance across the split. Um, currently has, I'm really excited to see. I don't know if he's going to pull it out, but I hear that he's 8 and 0 on Jin in the main uh, in the main season. So I'm really looking forward to see if he's going to pull that out today. We'll have to see. And lastly, of course, we do have Vivid. What's an ADC without his partner? But Vivid's going to come out once again. Another import from Korea. He's been doing a great job. He's recently been picking up a Nautilus to great success, going 4-0 on that champion over the past three weeks of the regular split. Uh, and he's really known for being that tanky support line that you really need to help out both his ADC, his mid laner, and of course, you know, the top laner there. And there, that's really the thing that is, separates Detonation from many of the other teams in the LJL is their ability to run a triple threat composition. A lot of the time, in the more developed regions, you'll see a lot of different players talking about the different things that teams can bring, and having a triple threat, being able to bring a threat from your bot lane, from your mid lane, and usually either your jungle or your top lane is huge. And most teams in Japan, due to the lack of development of the scene, can't do that. They are only able to bring two threats, and we saw from Rampage, they usually bring their two threats in the form of Utori as the ADC and uh, Tussle in the jungle. But Detonation can bring three. They bring Zeros, they bring Saros, and they bring Utapon. And it's very difficult to run up against these guys when any of their players can carry. Yeah. And, and one thing to talk about that too is that um, it's just so much. You know, when you play League of Legends, a lot of people tend to talk about like a standard team composition where you've got, you know, like two carries. Maybe you got an A carry and an AP carry in the mid lane, and then you've got uh, several frontline characters to make sure that those characters stay alive. Um, as you progress into these higher level games, you see less and less people uh, on those tanky champions and players playing more aggressively, uh, more uh, sort of volatile team comps, where you'll get like a rumble top lane, for example, or you'll see graves in the jungle. These champions that don't fulfill traditional frontline roles uh, but if you play well with your team and you coordinate well, you can really see a lot of success just by pumping out damage. Yeah, that's that's one thing that we have seen to great success is on both uh, both Paz, Shrimp, and uh, Tussle as well. They're well known for their carry style jungles, and that's something we've really been seeing recently with the you know the big changes to lethality and just the strength of damage junglers in general recently. Um, between the two of them, they've had a fantastic series. On the likes of Kha'Zix going a combined 8-1 between Paz and Shrimp on those two characters. And it's something that we can easily see them pull out again. Uh, Elise has been a big player as well recently for Tussle. We saw him play in four of the five games we actually saw against Unsold Stuff. 
something that they would pick usually in the first or second round of picking, simply because it's something that is very strong and Tussle is very familiar with it. And that's actually let's talk about that set a little bit more between um, unsold stuff and Rampage and just the comfort picks that Rampage was able to pick up throughout the series. Right, yeah. So we we definitely saw uh, Ramane going back to the Syndra that we talked about earlier. Um, definitely his most comfortable champion. And also I think, uh, you know, as a team, it's really nice when you can play around, you know, one or two champions that you just are very, very uh, well-versed in. You know how they sort of work together. Uh, Tussle as well on the Elise, uh, like we mentioned, and Yutori Miyasi on Lucian uh, in three out of five games uh, really helped to make their sort of their style of play consistent over the course of five games. They didn't have to worry about um, mixing up, drastically altering their play style in order to fit uh, the matchup. Yeah, and we even saw a little bit of that coming out from the top lane. Uh, we saw a lot of tanks coming out for uh, Rampage, the Tomkins and the Nautilus doing great work by Evie up in the top lane, because he's just, he's such a great defensive player and helping out the rest of his team, and just doing, you know, being where he needs to be to make sure that he can support them. We did see also a Fizz uh, in the last series as well, uh, it got a great lead early in the game, getting a couple of kills and assists, but unfortunately, he wasn't able to translate that into a further lead. It just goes back a little bit to the kind of comfort picks that they really enjoy playing. It did not look like Fizz was a comfort pick, but Detonation has been able to watch the series just as we have, and we're looking forward to seeing exactly how it is that they can keep those comfort picks off of Rampage and force them to mix something up, because we haven't seen that much variety coming out of Ramane. We haven't seen that much variety coming out of, Ram uh, of Tussle recently, and if they can keep them away from those champions, they should have a great chance to do really well. Yeah, uh, it, and it, it's interesting too because um, you know with this current patch, there are a lot of very strong champions that maybe weren't uh, picked up in the series that we saw between Rampage and USG, or, or weren't, weren't seen, didn't see as much play. You know, Ivern got banned every single game. A huge player on this patch. Uh, Lulu was also uh, mostly absent from those games. These are two like really powerful power picks in the. Uh, in the other scenes, both the NALCS and the EU LCS. And so I'm curious, uh, in this match between Detonation and Rampage, you know, if Detonation focuses on banning out comfort fits, picks, will some of these power picks that we've seen um, sneak through the ban process? Mm -hmm, absolutely. And at the same time, it's we got to talk about how difficult it's going to be to ban out Detonation, even with the five bans that uh, teams are afforded nowadays. You still, like we were talking about last time, the first three bans are usually just you know trying to get rid of champions that you just don't want to see in general. But the second set of bans are usually focused on trying to prevent someone who hasn't already picked yet from by uh, limiting the potential composition. You don't necessarily, if they already have a Lulu, you don't necessarily want to see a Kogma coming out at the same time that they haven't already picked it up for example, but the champions that Detonation plays are pretty varied. There aren't too many characters that they really focus on. The only ones that we've seen more than a handful of times, we've seen Gragas by Utapon played six times during the regular season, uh, eight games on Zeros Jin, uh, all mm -hmm. of them wins by the way, and his Ash as well, but that doesn't really tell us how how strong they're necessarily doing in that because they weren't necessarily in the matchups that they played and we are seeing some things that are banned against them for instance we haven't seen um the leblanc coming up from saras at all that's been banned by him or by rampage in the times that they've matched up every single time that's a character has been banned and we just can't see it because the yeah. japanese scene is just that scared of it yeah uh i'm 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 beyond excited uh, Josh, for this for this sort of matchup, uh, the final clash of the LJL to see what uh, how these players are going to adapt. You know, it's we haven't had that much time on this patch, and there are certainly some things that are different to this meta game, uh, unique to to Japan uh, that maybe other regions aren't doing. Like, uh, I also want to talk about yeah, Tom <laughs> Kent, the top lane, exactly, um, huge pickup. 
versus USG, right? Uh, Rampage was doing so much work with the Tom Kench, uh, able to save characters time and time again with that Devour ability, uh, protecting them from burst damage, uh, and just roaming around the map with the Abyssal Voyage ultimate. Um, not something that you see elsewhere in the world right now. Absolutely I, not. I, I wonder if that's going to be a targeted ban or not. Yeah, and it, it was interesting to see that it wasn't just Evie who was focusing on it, on Rampage. It was also his opponent who was trying to do so much with that Tom Kench. Again, it was picked or banned very early in the draft every single game because they put so much pressure on it. And I think this goes back a little bit to uh, something that we see a lot in the competitive scene. So first off, professionals pick strong champions. Secondly, they want to pick characters that uh, have low counterplay. But thirdly, right. you want to be able to protect the people and keep the people alive who you need to. And again, we can't harp on this enough, but Rampage is carried so hard by Yutori Moyashi throughout the season. Uh, having a 6.2 KDA in this matchup alone uh, against Detonation and having a 10.2 KDA over the entire season. You yeah. know, he's had, uh, he's 6-1 and one on Ezreal, 6-1 and one on six on one on Varus, five on one on a champion that I can't remember the name of, but he's been doing so well. He's had 10 plus KD on all these characters. And if you just give him those characters and are able to keep him alive with the likes of Tom Kench, and there we see, Tom Kench is the first band right out the gate. You don't get to play that, Evie. <laughs> no, uh, immediately gonna go ahead and go straight for those target bands. And, you know, another thing to talk about, you know, Tom Kench was such a, a huge part of the last series that we saw in the LGL, but Utapon doesn't play it, or at least he hasn't played it during the course of the regular season. So I think that's going to be an easy ban for him, as well as that Syndra uh, does not want to give Ramane his preferred champion, just going to target those right away. Yeah, absolutely. I, I would love to see him play a little bit more Syndra, but by the way that Detonation is coming out of the gates, just swing with that, I'm not sure we're going to be able to do that. We'll have to see what their last ban is. There's a lot of different things that you could potentially ban away based on how you're playing. And it is going to be Dar's Malzahar. Now that's something we also saw banned in the last time that they played, as well as the series that we just saw earlier in the season. Uh, Dara has a great Malzahar going 4-0 on the season with that, 4.9 KDA, because he's able to lock down things. And when you have a button, you say, no, you can't do anything. You're just going to take damage from my ADC. It's a great tool to have. Yeah, and we are going to see that Lulu ban uh, leaving Ivern available, as well as that Camille pick, which DFM will happily lock in. Uh, very strong champion, uh, traditionally, ever since her release. Uh, they're going to be happy to pick that one up. And interestingly, I like you said, Ivern is still available in this draft, but none of the players in this game really have a strong Ivern that we've seen a whole lot of throughout the season. I don't believe Tussle nor Paz have more than perhaps a game apiece on this champion than competitive scene. So, unlike last series where it was such an important pickup to have to pre deny from Neo, we're just gonna see it come through and I don't think we're gonna see it picked up, especially as Tussle's been uh, hovering over this Graves, a champion he did not get to play at all on Wednesday. He's going to very likely pick this up and potentially have, you know, the second threat available but i'm wrong he's going to go back to the least the fifth time he's picked it in the playoffs this season yeah um and, and something that there's definitely something to be said about elise's uh strength in pick potential uh having locked in both nautilus and elise it's very easy to uh, secure vision around objectives um and then just catch you know a, a member of dfm that's warding or or trying to to scout them out get an easy quick kill there and then transition that into a lead uh, that's probably what they're going to go for. Meanwhile, DFM goes ahead and picks up the top lane Gragas for Utapon. Are uh, you sure really it's the top lane Gragas? Oh, you're right. I'm Is mistaken. The... Now, that's very dangerous. We talked a lot about the flex picks a little bit, because the flex picks, being able to move those champions around, Gragas can be played in the top lane, he can be played in the jungle, and every now and then we see him make a play as support, but the Camille can very easily be played either in the top lane or as a support. Now it's interesting, we do see the Vars getting picked up uh, for Detonation, and this is something that has been a very interesting champion over the season, just watching the different ways he can build. Uh, during, the sea, or during the match we saw a couple days ago, Varus was generally built for team fighting. We saw the Blade of the Ruin King, uh, where the Ruin, or yeah, Blade of the Ruin King and the Ruin's Hurricane just being able to put down a lot of damage and doing a great job with that. 
But previously, we saw a lot of lethality builds, going for the piercing arrow damage as you just build up so much armor pen. But we do see the Lucian picked up for Yutori. That was one of his comfort champions. And it's a little interesting that uh, Saros was hovering Lucian before they ended up deciding on Varus. It, it almost sounds like a little bit of a bait. Yeah. Uh, definitely going to be that case here. And now both uh, teams looking to put some pressure on their mid laners. Uh, going to try and ban some of the mid lane champions that they don't want to see. Uh, Echo being banned for RPG and DFM going to go ahead and take away the Talon uh, from Ramane. Try and uh, scrunch him down even more. Now, it's interesting because DFM, you know, their mid laner plays, Saros plays a ton of champions. Um, RPG a little bit more limited. I'm kind of curious what this is going to force him down to with both Syndra uh, and Talon taken away from him. Uh, yeah, that's true. In the times that these guys have played throughout the season, Ramane has four games on Orianna of the five games that they played each other, and the last one was on Syndra, so I wouldn't be surprised to see that Orianna band. Uh, it's actually going to be his Talia, so we're probably going to see an Orianna pickup for Yutori, because I'm not sure what else he would play if he doesn't have any of the champions that are banned out available to him. Uh, he has a couple of games on Ari that he's done. He's done decently well with, but it looks like he's just going to step back, play that Orianna, and his Orianna throughout the season has been okay. Uh, his Orianna has been solid because it can protect Yutori, but it's not something he's necessarily carried with, and a character like that that has such strong carry potential due to the presence of the Shockwave, it's not the most impressive thing I've seen come out of him, but this is the playoffs. This is when everybody's going to be bringing things to their fullest potential. So I'm really hoping to see him make me eat my words. Right. Absolutely, Josh. And uh, over on DFM is Zillion Hover, and that will be a lock-in. I still have yet to see if that's going to be a mid lane Zillion or a support Zillion. But I think that I like the pick in the context of this game uh, in any case. Uh, RPG has a lot of... Uh, sort of single target damage. Oriana does some AoE, but uh, for the most part, at least this far into their draft, they're looking to single out a single target and burst them down really quick and then take an advantage from there. Uh, if DFM makes use of the Zillion ultimate well, they'll just be able to pick that person right back up uh, and prevent the advantage from happening. Uh, and it does look like that's going to be a mid lane uh, Zillion as they lock in the Shen as their final pick. Yeah, and I, I have to say I'm a really big fan of the way that Detonation Focus Me has uh, drafted this pick ban phase. They have both the Zillion and the Shen to just create so much survivability on a single champion that they want to. And it's going to be the Camille for Vivid down there in the bot lane. But between all of this, they have good lockdown available. They have the initiation available from both Camille jumping over walls as well as the Gragas with the explosive cast uh, cask. And they'll just be able to move around, but then it's also going to be very hard to kill their team. There's right. not that much burst damage available to Rampage. You get a little bit from the Elise, you have some from the Orion, you have a little bit from Brand and Lucian, but if they all use that little bit of burst that they have to burst down a single target, you're not going to be able to kill anybody else, because their damage is decently split between sustained and burst, but... When you have both a Shen and a Zillion and Gragas, who, you know, if you know me at all, you just know how much I love that <laughs> champion. And by love, I mean hate, because he does not die. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, one thing to talk about, though, is, you know, we talked about in the pregame, we sort of expected Detonation Focus Me to bring uh, what we call a three-threat cop comp to have uh, three big major damage healers. Uh, their team doesn't really have that. Uh, this game. You know, they've got a ton of tankiness in both Gragas and Shen. Uh, but with Camille relegated to the support role, she's not going to have as much items to build up uh, the sort of damage that we expect to see out of her. Uh, mm. So, I I wonder, you know, if Rampage is able to pick a fight where they're able to survive and dive past those tanks, they might see more success in a straight 5-on-5 five five team fight against that nation focus me. We'll have to see, though, as we get the game. Yeah, absolutely. And there we go. Once again, we saw this fantastic graphic coming out last time they were playing. Just 
you know, a beautiful view of the fantastic job that Riot did with the Summoner's Rift update. I believe that's almost two seasons ago. But here we go, we're getting into game one between Detonation Focus Me and Rampage in the LJL season finals. Thank you for joining us. Oh, man. So, I don't expect anything too crazy to happen out of these uh, games, uh, at least at the level one. It uh, looks like, like they're just going to... Are you saying the triple Reggie beat on, on Shen isn't crazy enough for you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I love, mean... I love that build coming out of Shen, because it gives you so much... Uh, what's it called? Uh, health regeneration, just over the, the entire laning phase. You'll just sit there, and that'll easily give him you know, 500 to 1,000 health back over the laning phase that he can just use to push down Nautilus, who does sustain damage. He's not going to be able to burst that out. And unless Nautilus goes for a couple of very favorable trades towards the early game, Utapon's just going to be able to sit there and be very happy, just kind of laughing as he just builds up more and more health. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's interesting because we haven't seen a build like that uh, recently, you know, Really, I, I can't remember the last time I've seen a Shen go triple Riju B, but it makes a lot of sense in the uh -oh. context of what he's going to build this game. Oh, yeah. Sarah's going in. Just get harass. Just gets a little bit. He was looking for a couple of. Uh oh, Viv is going in very early. He's getting a lot of damage down. He's going to take a lot of damage in return, and it's going to be all right. Dara and Mayashi are going to be able to pop back up and get a lot of it back, but I think Vivid's going to win that trade with the Relic Shield Sustain coming out in just a moment. Yeah, I, I like sort of the, the early move from Saros. Uh, you know, Zillion doesn't do a whole lot of damage to help leash for his jungler, so he just gets some vision on Elise, uh, kind of keeps track of them. Uh, I, I can respect that play. But going back to the top lane, um, Yutapon also, you know, if you think about what she wants to build in this matchup, you know that he's going to be building that Titanic Hydra, uh, which uses those rejuvenation baits, uh, and he's probably going to build some other stuff as well. Um, like maybe like a redemption or something so it's definitely a worthwhile pickup for him yeah absolutely but here we go we're seeing nothing seeing nothing too unique coming out of these junglers right now they're both moving towards the bottom half of the map we i wouldn't be surprised if we saw a fight over the scuttle crab right now but it's definitely going to be in favor of rampage over the next couple of seconds because They've taken so much damage on the part of Detonation, but here it comes Paz. He's looking for the first gank of the game, and there goes the incoming ping. He jumps forward, gets a stun onto Dara, taking a lot of damage. Heal's already committed, but Vivid is almost taken down. Here comes a flash out of Paz, and Dara should be able to get out alright, but Utori might not be able to do the same thing. He still does not have his flash available, but oh, oh, here comes first blood. He's going to take it onto Varus, and Paz is stunned up. He's not going to be able to get too close. He does finally commit the body slam and take him out. That is going to be a one-for-one -one trade, but that is going to be... The first blood going over to your target. Here comes Tussle. He's not going to let them get away with that. He's coming around. They don't see him yet. Here comes the stun out. That's going to be the second kill going over the double assist going over to both Utari and Dara. And Vivid's not safe either. He still has his flash available. But Tussle's going to just back out and start pushing this wave back in. Yeah, it's sort of disastrous gank uh, gone wrong for DFM. They thought that they would have the advantage, but um, Utari Miyasi just playing. A little bit better, able to get the pick up oh, the first Oh, look blood at that Zeros. percentage go! Rampage seeing a lot of fans, and especially <laughs> as the Twitterverse lights up after that big play, picking up a 66 percent voting on Twitter. Wow, that that's some dedication from your fans just watching out for you. But that was fantastically played in the bottom lane, getting so much advantage. They're already at nearly a thousand gold lead. And it's only four minutes in the game. Yeah. And, and you have to imagine a lot of that comes from that, you know, early first first blood gold. But that's definitely, um, you know, it's tough uh, to play at this level. And to see, like, your, even just the first play of the game that you try to make uh, go wrong is definitely unnerving. Uh, I'm hopeful that RPG can pull it out and be resilient. Or excuse me, DFM can be resilient, um, not feel too bad about that, and continue to play at the top level. Yeah, the interesting thing that we see right now is the flashes that are available or not available for both teams right now. Vivid is the only player in the bottom lane with that flash available, but Paz does not. Tussle knows this, and he's going and blows up that blast cone, potentially sacrificing the kill, but he's going to come out. Paz sees the ward come out, but I think that's going to be just about it as Saras is starting to head down towards the bottom half of the map. Yeah, not a whole lot, just scouting each other out. Um, yes, you know, Tussle doesn't wolf. really have a whole lot to do. Oh, we'll get the wolf. Nicely done. Yeah, 
Ooh, Dar is doing a lot of damage. He's already stacked up that uh, Stealth Thieves enough times. I'm sure he's got a bit of a gold lead over Vivid by now, but every single pillar of flame has been hitting onto both Xeros and Vivid. There he goes, gets a stun onto Vivid. He still has a flash available, but that's a lot of damage. And that is going to be it as the burst comes out. That is going to be another kill going over to the bot lane of Rampage. And that is absolutely big. We see Romney taking a little bit of harass here in the middle lane. And Tussle's going to start moving around in the top side of the jungle. It appears I have lost my co-caster temporarily, but he should be back in just a couple of minutes as we're seeing a lot more movement around the map. And this is interesting. Even with the triple Reggie beard, Utapon is starting to lose a lot of CS to his lane opponent as Evie's able to just pick up so much here around the sides. And with the strength of his bot lane and his mid lane already, that could very easily be translated to something very impactful. We back, friend. Uh... It is worth noting that Utapon has hit that level 6, does have access to Stand United. Um, will look to use that as quickly as possible, hopefully to uh, mitigate the damage done in this bottom lane. Mm -hmm. And Paz just did something very smart there that you don't necessarily see very often in solo queue. He chose not to kill the ward. Now that's something that a lot of people don't necessarily realize is when you use the control wards on those regular wards, the wards don't work. You can just stand on top of them, and as long as you aren't hitting them, nobody will know you're there. And by doing that, he denies some information onto Rampage, and hopefully he'll be able to translate that into something more useful. Here we go. Teleport being committed to Evi, telegraphing that they are not necessarily planning on going for the Ocean Drake anytime soon. Yeah. Uh, Evi going to go ahead and... I think that his his main goal at this point in the game is to just... Uh, he's gone for the double dorms ring to get the mana sustain. What he wants to do is he wants to shove in Utapon as much as possible to punish uh, any possible stand United plays he wants to make. Um, mm -hmm. By just going for the double dorms, dorms ring, he's going to regen a lot of mana, use those AoE abilities that Nautilus has to uh, farm up as quickly as possible and prevent Utapon from having the impact that he wants to have. Yeah, that'll be really big if he's able to do that. Evie, as we've seen, has been very impactful on these tank champions, but isn't necessarily known for his ability to hard carry the games. But if he can, you know, a lot like Nunu, back when Nunu was very popular, he's not necessarily the most useful champion on his own, though he does get a lot of mileage out of the Blood Boil and the uh, Snowball. But what he does is he makes the other jungler pretty useless. And if you can keep Shen down and stay miles ahead as Nautilus, it doesn't matter if Shen's going to be giving that shield to someone you're just going to slowly beat them down with the dredge line with the uh, death charge and just ignore all of that but right now we're just going to stabilize a little bit a bit of a 2,000 gold lead on behalf of rampage and we're starting to see some items come out for all of our all of our different laners yeah it looks like you tore Mayasi gonna go for that uh, blade of the rune king first build on Lucian that we've seen uh, I especially like this pickup uh, against the tank-heavy composition of DFM. You know, they have a lot of frontline uh, members who are going to be building at least some amount of health, uh, being able to chase through that with the uh, Bushwater Cutlass and eventually the Blade Ranking is definitely a good pickup for him. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we see Tussle once again here. This could be a little bit more dangerous. Utapon, or Utori is giving a lot of damage down to Zeros. He still has both of his summoners available, but that is likely going to force him out of lane, especially with Tussle... Uh, being able to move around, potentially get down and escape with the repel, but looks like he's got different ideas. Saros is in the mid lane with that teleport. Paz is now visible on the map, and they have a lot of different options available to them with that gold lead. And, oh, Vivid getting a little bit of damage, missing the piercing arrow coming up, but there's a lot of options available to Rampage right now. Yeah. Um, and, and they're not, they don't necessarily have to act on them, right? Um, yeah. uh -oh. you know, Vivid's they've got a solid lead. Him. The Hex Hex Ultimatum's gonna come down. The Pillar of Flame misses. Utori's taking a lot of damage. He has a flash veil, but we can't leave yet. Paz misses the Body Slam flash, but it's okay. You're getting a couple of summoners out of the Rampage bot lane, and that means he can come back very soon. Yeah. Uh, really Shockwave aggressive. committed in the mid lane. Maraman is going hard onto Saros, getting the Thunderlord's proc right now, but... I don't think we're going to see too much. Tussle's going to come around the side, hopefully get the cocoon. He does hit it, but with the ultimate coming out of Zillion, that's all they're going to be able to get. Yeah, it's still definitely a solid play out of RPG. Um, they do get priority and some pressure on this mid lane turret, and also, uh, you know, making plays in the bot lane match, but here comes Paz. 
Yeah, Paz is going to be backing away. He sees that ward go down, and there's they're going to spot him out and not necessarily do anything with it. A gank at this level of play isn't necessarily very successful if you can uh, be ready for it, and that's exactly what Rampage are. Teleport coming out from Sarah is not going to want to lose too much of that CS, and we're seeing large CS leads coming out of all of Rampage's lanes right now. Yeah, really uh, making the aggression work for them and now looking to make that ocean drake they know that the bottom lane uh, Zeros was forced uh, sort of the farm under the turret so rpg should be able to pick up this first drake of the game pretty quickly uh will give them some increased health regeneration which is definitely helpful against uh, the likes of Zeros piercing arrow poke damage yeah, absolutely, and we don't see a whole lot in the way of Siege potential coming out from Rampage. They're going to want to engage more, but when your primary poke is coming out from Dara's brand and Ramune's uh, Oriana, it's not going to do as much as Zillion hucking bombs or piercing arrows coming out of Xerost. Yeah, so it, it's really nice to, to have that sort of first dragon protection. Um, especially, you know, if you have the opportunity to take the dragon, it's not an infernal, why not take it, right? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Further cement your lead. Yeah, we've we've been holding steady at this 2,000 gold lead for the past couple of minutes. And while that's great, Rampage R is still going to hit their item spikes just a little bit earlier than Detonation. Hopefully be able to translate that into some big fights here in the early games where you're, as we wait for potential objectives to become back available. But first Tower Blood is still avail available for everyone, and that's something we're likely going to see uh, become pressured very soon. Yeah, this uh, this first back timing uh, for bot lane, well, I guess the second back timing for bot lane is going to be really important. If you look over the items between these uh, two laners, uh, we see Utori Miyasi has already completed his first shot in the game with uh -oh. that Blade of the Rune King. Paz doesn't realize he's going to spot it out this gank. He's going to have to wait a long time if he wants it to be useful at all. He's probably just going to end up backing one of the bushes here as they wait for Utori and Dara to return to pushing. Yeah, he's been putting a lot of focus on this lane because he knows... Uh, that after that sort of first uh, failed gank that uh, Zerost and Vivid definitely need the help, uh, but he's just not being able to find the opportunities that he needs to. Yeah, absolutely. And with Tussle and Utori and Dar all being able to respond pretty pretty well to the way that they're moving on. Another shockwave came out from Romney going in on Zeros. He does have his ultimate available again, but... If you can put him at low health and force him to ult himself in the upcoming fight that is inevitably going to happen after that kind of play. Uh, here comes Viv coming with the Hextech ultimatum. He's got Shen with him. They're doing a lot of damage. They've got to punt it up under tower, but they're not going to be able to finish it. He's still alive. He does end up going down, but that is one kill traded back. As Camille goes down, there comes the ultimate coming out of Saros onto Utapum, but he's all by himself getting chased down by a spider. The little old man is going to be able to run away successfully. They're trying to turn back on Utapum. He taunts over the wall. And there aren't any flashes available or willing to be committed by Rampage. But a one-for-one -one trade is going to be all right. Uh-oh. Dara flashes forward. Gets a stun onto Paz. A lot of damage. The explosive cask is going to be able to save him. Tussle is going to take a lot of tower shots. Does end up going down. Dara is already dead. But Evie's around the side. He's still looking for more. And this fight just keeps going. But Utori is doing Utori things. Is going to take the bot turret as well. Yeah. Um, definitely a, a chaotic fight between both teams trying to secure an advantage. You know, you have to worry you know at the highest level of play everything's on the line with this between these two teams uh maybe not the cleanest fights we've seen uh utori able to pick one advantage let's watch that again uh so vivid goes in huge with the stand united uh really aggressive play however ramane flashes behind the turret and that forces uh them into a turret dive that they didn't want to take and then from here it just gets uh more and more messy Utapon gets saved by the zillion ultimate will uh, survive for a little while longer. Uh, does end up having to burn his flash. Uh, nice taunt gets him out of the way. But uh, then we see Dara sees the opportunity on Paz, gets the flash stun uh, to take the kill. A great task will trade with Tussle. Um, and all the while, uh, Yutapur, or excuse me, uh, Yutori is just gathering farm in the bot and taking that bot turret. Yeah, absolutely. And we see Evie, he's in a good spot right now. He's not going to be able to pick up that hook onto Paz, but overall, the gold lead did extend somewhat for Rampage throughout that fight. They did trade kills, and now there's a little bit extra gold onto Saros and Zeros, which are not the players you want to have that extra gold in their pocket as they go forward, as they're two very strong carries. But the extra gold, the extra kill amount of gold going onto Utori, as well as the tower gold 
now being traded back, but traded still in the favor of Rampage. They're going to have this great lead as they start to move forward with the next dragon spawning in just a minute and a half. We're going to have to see these huge item breakpoints that are starting to come out for Rampage. Yeah, and we just saw a really smart uh, exhalation of the lead there. Uh, Rampage, because they got the uh, first bottom turret, they were able to send Utori uh, back before Xerost got back. And because of that, they take the second turret ahead of time and are able to pressure the secondary turret, forcing Xerost and Vivid uh, back again to try and defend this. Yeah, and right now, Evie's fighting a little bit with Utapon on the opposite side of the map. He does have the Stand United. The Explosive Cask is just going to be there to try and save the turret. Because you don't want to give that map pressure over to your opposing team already. But here comes Vivid once again. Hextech Ultimatum issue to Dara. He gets stunned up. He gets snared up. He gets stunned up once again. And he's got nowhere to run as the Fire Mage does go down. They still have most of their ultimates still available. Evie's looking to find Paz here. They don't want to give up too much for this dragon for free. It's just a little bit of poke because they're going to have to return back to the mid lane. And this is where the lack of wave clear on the part of Rampage could potentially come to hurt them. They don't have a good way to clear this up. Evie's on the side fighting with Vivid. I don't know how long he's going to be able to do that. Is going to get a taunted up. No, he's not. Each one does chooses not to commit it. But decent damage going on right now as they're starting to trade. There's not a lot of ultimates necessarily left for Detonation Focus Me. And they did wait long enough for Dara to come back. With the dragon spawning in five seconds, they might have taken too long. Yeah. I want to talk about uh, DFM. You know, it seems like they've definitely played with this uh, composition before. Once again, using the power of the Hextech ultimatum on top of the Stand United from Shen to really single out a target and just absolutely murder them. Uh, this isn't something that we talked about in the pregame, but it seems like a really strong strategy going forward as both uh, as Rampage looks to take this Cloud Drake. Yeah, and the Cloud Drake is not necessarily that great in solo queue, but in this level of gameplay it's a huge boon to you being able to move around especially with the lack of wave clear and the siege potential that they have being able to get to objectives first and take them down quickly is going to be a fantastic thing for rampage as they move forward yeah i'm really curious to see how fights sort of develop uh, now that we uh, now that each team is starting to get some of their preliminary items you know ramane just finished that first Merlinomicon. um Possibly debating between either going for the Leandri's route to get the maximum amount of damage uh, onto the maximum number of players on DFM or potentially that Luton's Echo to uh, really burst down a single target. I I don't know how these fights are going to turn out. I mean, we talked about how uh, DFM really has to pick and burst their targets carefully because with a three tank composition, they just don't have uh, sort of the the damage um to win an extended fight as long as rpg can stay alive yeah absolutely uh oh we are starting to see it come back again but there's so much wave clear on the part of detonation it's gonna be difficult to do a whole lot here and especially with utapone still up in the top lane stand united not available yet but he does have the teleport they're gonna have to find a way to take the objectives that don't just involve running it up mid yeah one strategy that uh RPG could employ here is if they can uh, reach a point where Evie can shove Utapon in so that he has to uh, really consider whether or not it's worth the teleport. Uh, that could be one way to maybe open up this mid lane. Either that, or they're just going to have to wait for a pick or wait until the next uh, major objective comes up, such as that Baron uh, spawning in one minute. Yeah, absolutely. And one other one other option that we hadn't mentioned yet was we often see this, especially at the higher levels of play, is when there's a global on the other team that you need to deal with, you don't let the global stay off on the side. You go to the global, you prevent him from teleporting, you take his abilities, you keep him down, then it doesn't matter if he joins the fight later on. You can just either continue to kill him or just kind of ignore him when he gets there. And Shen doesn't necessarily have that much damage in the first place. Vivid's going on to Dar. He does issue the Hextech ultimatum, but I'm not sure this is something he really wants to do. The Shen ultimate, Stand United is committed. Vivid is forced to flash out. Dar is forced back into the enemy team, and he is stunned up. That is going to be the kill going over to Zeros there. But Yeah, a bit of a messy start, but VFM will be happy to pick up the uh, player advantage and will transition that likely into a mid lane turret take. Uh, doesn't look like Rampage is going to be here quite in time. 
they're gonna they're gonna be able to clear most of it up. But Sarah, or excuse me, Ramane was down in the bot lane that entire time, getting up a little bit of farm on his opponent, but ultimately not worthwhile when you take so much damage on both your mid turret and on your support. Enough damage to kill your support even. Yeah. And, I mean, still, though, things still looking okay for Rampage. They do have a 3k gold lead, uh, still holding steady onto that. Um, have to worry, though, you know, they're due to the short-range nature of their abilities, uh, sieging past these Tier 1 outer turrets, like, once they take down the Tier 1 mid-turret, I'm not so sure how they're going to continue to increase their advantage. Oh, no, the, the blue buff there. reset. And they're going to have oh. to start it over. That's heartbreaking. That That's feels a... bad. <laughs> Saros is sitting with no mana, and it... if Rampage was in a good spot, that could be the prime time that they needed to go back and take it. Saros is going to roam back and pick it up. Good guy Paz, just holding it there for him for as long as he needs. And this time, they're careful not to let her reset. Yeah. And here you can see, you know, sometimes... Even in professional play, uh, nerves get the best of you, or or little things like this sort of slip by. Normally not a big deal. Uh, fortunately for DFM, Rampage wasn't immediately pressuring the mid lane uh, at the same time that Saros was trying to get that blue buff. Um, yeah. Should be okay. It should be alright. And we are starting to see Vivid getting some good engages on this game so far. He's already picked up Dara uh at least once he jumped down into Romney, and that's how all these fights have been starting and how dfm has started to even up the kill count but it's not going to necessarily be enough long term if they keep doing that especially as the damage on lucian the burst potential by Romney and utori starts to grow he's gonna need to be able to find a less ambitious picks shall we say yeah, and, and it's going to get uh, harder and harder for him to dive in there by himself, right? As long as they can, if they can coordinate the ultimate with Utapon, mostly okay, but uh, because it's a support and he's going to have less items maybe than you would expect a normal uh, top lane Camille to have, you have to be really careful about what you can and can't jump into uh, yeah, on that champion. And here, we're seeing with the next dragon coming up in about 50 seconds, we're going to see you know, teams returning to this mid lane, running it down mid, perhaps a bit too much, a little bit of damage getting traded back and forth. Ooh, save the ward. They do end up saving up, but here comes Evie. He's coming down. Stand United is available for you to put in. Leaving him there to farm by himself might not be the best idea. Good damage going down onto Evie. Actually blocked up by his shields for the most part. But we're going to have to see a little bit more setup from Rampage. They seem a little overly content to just sit down mid. Uh oh. Calling does come out, Vivid hops the wall, and that's going to be the end of that. And Ten seconds left on the dragon. We're going to see Vivid do something either very smart or very stupid in the next couple of seconds as he <laughs> tries to get an engage on. Yeah, with Yusufon pressuring the top lane, they really have to make a decisive play here, or else they're just going to uh, lose nothing. This is an Infernal Dragon, so it is a big pickup for them if they can secure uh -oh. it. Evion to Vivid, he's getting a good amount of damage. Standing Knight hasn't come out yet. Shockwave is taking down that support very low, but he's going to be able to walk out. Death Charge goes down onto Zeros with Explosive Cask. Should be able to keep them safe. Stand United is still available, and we see Utapun looking for it. Utori being very aggressive like he normally is, moving towards them. And this is not a fight that they necessarily want to take. Avi gets another dredge line onto Paz. He's re stunned up, forced to flash out. Utapun is still up in the top lane, and this is going to be not only the Infernal Drake, but the middle turret getting traded for just the top turret. This could be a lot more as they start to move down the mid lane. No, they're going to choose to return back to whatever it was they were doing before as Utapun finally equalizes the top lane turret. Yeah, definitely overall win for Rampage. I'm a little uh, curious why DFM didn't feel that it was possible for them to pull the trigger there. You know, they had the Stan United ultimate available to them. They could have potentially turned that fight around, but instead wanted to play it passive, wanted to play it safe, uh, continue to scale up, take the top lane turret in exchange for the Infernal Drake. Um, we'll have to see if that bites them or not. Yeah, and perhaps a little too safe. They did end up losing several summoners for that. Crucially, Zeros does not have his flash anymore. And, uh, you know, he still does have the Stand United and the uh, Chrono Break? Chrono Rewind? Whatever Zillion's ultimate is. He's going, to, he's going to have, you know, a lot of survivability built in that way. But, you know, if you can save that for someone who's going to live a lot longer, it's generally a little more worthwhile. If he tries to get the uh, Dreadline, does not match it with a vivid dash away so he's gonna be okay 
we're still seeing a 3k gold lead up for Rampage right now, but with the dragons starting to build up, Focus Me is going to have to find a real way to try and get back into the lead and in the driver's seat of this game. It's difficult for them at this point um, because Rampage has been playing uh, very well on a macro level of this game. You know, they, they grabbed a couple early advantages. Ooh, great dodge from Saros. Keeps him safe from Tussle's uh -oh, Calling goes on to Zeros. A lot of damage going down onto him. Vivid is going to block a little bit for that. But uh oh, Evie is around the bag. Because we're talking about Zeros doesn't have any flash. He's stunned up. He's taking so much damage in the middle. He does get the ultimate from Zillion. But here comes a damage back. He Tori's jumped on by Vivid. And Utipon's on the other side. Utori does pick that up onto the support. But there's a lot of trades going back and forth. Tussle ends up going down. Paz and Saros are finding Evie right underneath the turret. Saros doesn't have ultimate. He does go down. Paz has nothing left either. And he's going down. Utipon is trying to find one more into Romney before Utori and. Evie can come back, but that is a 4 for 2 going over to Rampage, and this is the second middle turret, and that was disastrous. What a fantastic TP from Evie, able to sneak around the back line, force a fight when Xeros uh, and DFM were at a place of weakness that didn't have uh, their flashes available for the start of that fight. Um, they played that wonderfully, and they'll be able to reward themselves with an inhibitor afterwards. Well, it doesn't look like they're going to quite get the inhibitors. They're going to choose to back away. And I really hope we get a replay of that, because I want to take a look at what was going on on the other side, because I know Dara and Utapon are fighting each other. But Dara still has his flash up. Utapon does it, and I'm not sure that that was the greatest use of his time. But here we go. They're going to grace us with it. Yeah, so uh, here we see, you know, DFM pushing up. They really want to take this turret. Um, don't quite get it. Utori lands a lot of damage onto Xerost as the TP comes in from the back line. Uh, the stand United isn't quite enough. Uh, they have to burn the Stand United, Saros' ultimate, um, and just so many resources trying to keep Zeros alive, and it's not quite enough. Meanwhile, uh, Maturi Miyasi sneaks around the side, is able to clean up the kills on Saros' Paz, as well as, um, as well as one other person. Saros, right? But... We yeah, did yeah. see it. Utapon is at a point where he is strong enough to start 1v2ing some of the backline. We saw him fighting both Romney and Dara there. He got he got one of them down, but Chen doesn't do that much damage. And so that potential tankiness that he could have provided to the rest of the team, he did get a great W blocking a lot of auto attacks onto Zeros and Saros towards the beginning of the fight. But they lost it towards the latter half of the fight, and that tankiness preventing... Uh, Utori from jumping onto Saros without his ultimate potentially ended up. But uh oh, here comes Vivid. Gets a stun onto Tussle one more time. He's not issued the Hexic ultimate yet. Doesn't do it. The taunt does land onto Tussle as Utapon comes along the side. Uh, uh oh, Romney with a shockwave, but the ultimatum is not going to go onto Tussle. It's going to go onto Romney. And the side, he's caught up in his own jungle, turning around. Utori's trying to get a little bit of damage, but this could be the Baron as they start to move forward. Utapon is so fast with that Zeal, and he gets a lot of damage. Utori does finally go down. They trade it for Utapon's life, but that's going to be very well worth it as. Tussle goes up into the air. He does the Guardian Angel. He's going to have to pop it. Oh, he does not. There's something going around him. But here we go. Evie is Evie and Dar are the only two left. They're going to have to contest this Baron at 20 minutes. It's going to do a lot of damage. Dar does not have his ultimate available. He's just going to have to throw things over the side. And if they can stop this, it's absolutely worthwhile. They goes on to Saros. He doesn't have his ultimate. Vivid jumps around, misses the stun onto Dara. That's going to be big. There's a lot of damage going on to Paz and Saros in the mid lane. Now there's no damage going on to Evie. He finally picks up Saros. He's going to go for Zeros as well. Dara's on the other side. He's still alive. Misses the dredge line. Evie is in a bad spot now. He, there is the red buff on to Zeros. But that was fantastic. They got a kill. They were able to get out. They stopped the Baron. Evie and Dara are both still alive. And that was just sloppy wow. from Focus Me. They're going to have to pick that up. Yeah, I mean, at, at first I was going to commend uh, Don't Foc uh, Dominate Focus to me because they did such a great job of making a decisive call. Uh, Vivid's target selection was incredible. Uh, le first landing the stun on the tussle to force him to run away and then catching out Ramane with the, uh, with the isolation ultimate uh, to secure a kill and an advantage. But they just didn't respect the amount of magic damage and, and just... Uh, pure burn that Baron does. Now RPG going to look to uh, punish the mistake by picking up another dragon. Yeah, and that's huge. And the other thing they didn't respect was the fact that before that fight, Evie was 3-0-2. He is a very tanky undead sailor. He starts to move around with the Sunfire, the Spirit Visage, and now he's picking up the Knight's Vow, which I'm sure he's going to crown you Tori with, because, I mean, what else does Rampage do, right? But they're going to be moving around 
with so much tankiness, so much ability to engage, they finally did lose a CS advantage onto Evy, but he's okay with that. He's up three kills on his lane opponent. He'll still be able to bully him around whenever he feels like it. Yeah, and, you know, the uh, the damage from Baron just really wrecked them there. It, a lot of people don't think about the um, armor and magic resist aura that Baron activates uh, when you're d doing damage to it. So even though Evi doesn't do a lot of damage uh, by himself, uh, just by sp sheer base, base values plus the Sunfire Cape was enough to be uh, a huge threat that DFM just didn't really respect. Yeah, uh -oh, here Tussle finds Paz getting a lot of damage. And Stan United is... Oh, but there they go. They're onto you, Tori. He's not got anything to keep him alive. He's taking a lot of damage. He's staying alive a lot longer than you might expect. Dara and Tussle are going to have to get a little bit of damage back. They do stun up Vivid. Romney is going in. He still has the Shockwave available. He uses the Flash. Evie's on the backside taking a lot of damage from Zeros. He's not going to be able to get out, but they do trade it for Vivid's life. Oh, he does get out with a dredge line. Flash Stomp comes up from Utapone. And that could be the end of it. A two for one going over to Detonation Focus Me. But they're in no shape to contest if they couldn't do it last time. Yeah, able to uh, make the best of a sort of a messy situation there, are able to pick up uh, both Utori and Evie. Now looking to uh, take this mid lane with their numbers advantage should be an easy pickup for Look them. Look at how fast he is. <laughs> yeah, that, that's definitely really scary with the speed boost from Saros on the uh -oh, tanks. Shockwave onto Paz does force the ultimate out of Saros's zillion. That could be it. They do manage to defend the second turret, and with no objectives really on the field other than that Baron, they're just going to be sitting around waiting for a little bit longer. Yeah, I like that ultimate out of Ramane, just trying to save their turret as much as possible, even though, uh, you know, you typically think that you want to save your shockwaves for more than one turret. Uh, it's a deterrence, and it saves the middle turret, prevents some gold from going over to uh, detonation focused me. They got to be feeling good about that. Yeah, and here we go. We are starting to see more item breakpoints coming out. We were talking about the Leandres versus Ludens. Uh, wrong when they chose both. And uh, here we go. Vivid does not have the Stand United to keep his... Uh, decision a little bit better. He goes on to both Romney and Utori, but they're out of the fight right now. There's only three members in this fight for Rampage as they're starting to turn back. Utori comes back, but he doesn't have a front line anymore. It's just Tussle, Romney, and Utori as they decide, hey, let's go into the jungler, see if we can prevent the Baron. Misses the taunt, but it's gonna be okay. He's gonna get out, and look at that W so absorbing so many of the auto attacks coming out from Utori, and it should be enough. Vivid's looking for a little bit around the side, and when all is said and done, that's a two for two, and that was a 3v5 for most of it for Rampage. Yeah, um, DFM played pretty well. Uh, they had a bit of a weird positioning. Saros taking a ton of damage. Was able to survive for a little bit longer uh, with the Zillion ultimate, and that was enough. He also had a fantastic amount of AoE damage from the time bombs, uh, really sort of catching Rampage off, off guard and picking up two kills uh, through that. And here we go again. We're going to say it exactly. Vivid managed to separate this fight absolutely fantastically. We see him go down onto Romney. They're taking a lot of damage, but the explosive cast from Paz means that there's just Dara, Evie, and Tussle on the other side, and two of them go down before Utori is really able to come back, and they start to get a little bit of damage here onto Paz. They do end up taking down Saros from the burn from Brand. As they start to move around, Paz does get out, but Utapone is not able to do the same. They're going to slowly grind him down with the massive sustained damage that comes coming out of Orion and Lucian at this point in the game. Yeah, uh, DFM definitely did a really good job in that fight of uh, splitting out RPG uh, by threatening Ramane and Yutori Miyasi so they couldn't join the fight initially, and they had to deal with Vivid. Uh, then being able to re-collapse on the members of Rampage that were caught out, Dara and Evi, picking up two quick and easy kills that way and sort of uh, helping to mitigate the gold lead. It's still pretty significantly in RPG's favor. You know, they're sitting on a 6k gold lead and a massive four dragons, um, but not a lost fight for DFM by any means. Yeah, absolutely not. And we're starting to see, once again, the Guardian Angel race has already started, and right now Rampage is winning. They already have two of them. We see two of them being worked on by Detonation, but it's going to be a little while before Shen and Grogs are able to pick that up and match the Zillion Ultimates. Who needs a Zillion when you can just buy your own? <laughs> That's very true, Josh. Let's see here. How does DFM want to proceed with this match? They would really like to find a team fight 
where Rampage is not so grouped up. If they can have another fight where they split off the carries, they get Ramane and Yutori Muyasi on opposite sides of the, the fight, and they're able to pick one and kill them quickly, that could be their way to secure a victory and potentially either a Baron or an Inhibitor at this late in the game. And we do see, it looks like we're going to get five regular dragons coming up this game, if I'm not mistaken. As it looks like we got 20 seconds until the next one as they start to come up, but we're starting to see another one of my favorite champions, Brand, picking up both of the Riley Andres, as we like to say. He's going to be doing a lot of damage for a support character. If we were to see the damage charts at the end of the game, but here we go. Rampage is going to start it up. They're already over the wall. It's already down to half. Vivid doesn't see it yet. He pops the pink ward. There he goes over the wall. It gets the Olexic ultimatum onto Vivid. The taunt is not going to be enough. They do end up taking down the Baron for Rampage. Dar is caught off on the wrong side. Yutori's over the wall, getting the calling onto a lot of people. Dar is the first one to go down in this fight. Vivid might be next. Evie and Tussle are so tanky right now. They're not going down. Yutori's by himself looking so much damage. He's doing so aggressive. He finally gets past. The ultimate comes out. Utapon is the last member. Never mind, Saris on the other side. The taunt does come out. The time bomb's gonna kill him. No, it's not. Tussle has the guardian angel. Doesn't matter what you do to him. He has his own zillion already. Wow. Just, wow. What a fantastic uh, team fight from both teams. Uh, DFM was trying so, so hard to disrupt the Baron. Uh, RPG wins just by slivers of HP. We saw three members of the team brought in low between Utori, uh, Tussle, and Evie. Uh, DFM just not quite able to find the kills that they needed to in order to secure that fight. And with that, RPG will further submit their lead all the way up to a 10,000 gold lead. And now they're pinging towards the Elder Baron. Elder Dragon, excuse me. Yeah, but we, we got to talk a little bit about two things. One, that's the power of four dragons coming out. That Infernal Drake, they hadn't been able to get that damage. The fight could have been very easily going the other way. They were, Like you said, they're all alive with slivers of health. But the other thing is we got to talk about Yutori Moyashi once again. We keep talking about how how well he's doing, and then we keep seeing him surrounded by so many members of the other team, and it doesn't matter. He is still alive. He is still killing them, and... Once again, we saw this in the last time that we were watching Rampage play. We thought he was dead, but he was just like, nah, bruh, I got this. Yeah, uh, really stellar play out of him. Continuing to shot call and lead his team uh, to victory. Now, if you're playing his uh, detonation focus, you have to be worried. You have to be uh, very cautious about fighting this team that has both the Elder Dragon and the Baron. They are going to seed the Tier 2 turret. Uh, will RPG be able to get more? It's going to be difficult for them. Look at the damage they're already starting to crush down this inhibitor turret. They're going in. There's two Guardian Angels available for them. And like you said, with a double dragon, or excuse me, with a double major buffs, these people talk about these are the win conditions you need. If you get one of them, you can win the game. When you have both, it's going to be very scary for you to do anything. They're just going through. They got the one inhibitor. They got the two inhibitor. They're going to go up top. They're going to take the third inhibitor with the Baron. Utapon pushed out the wave, which is a very good job. It's going to take them a lot longer to come down the mid lane. But that's okay. Rampier's gonna go pick up the blue buff onto Romney and then just go right back to pushing. It looks like they still have about a quarter of the Baron left and half of the Elder Dragon. So Rampage are not worried about this upcoming fight. They do have to be careful though. That's not to mean they can't throw the game. Explosive cast goes on to Evie, pushes in the wrong direction. Paz and Evie are already fighting the turret. You're taking a lot of damage. I think he's taking up the turret, but there goes Evie. Vivid is in the middle of the enemy team, taking a lot of damage. The True damage coming out from the Elder Dragons is going to take a lot. Utori's around the back. Romney and Utori are untouched. They're starting to get a lot of damage back in. Tussle goes back in, takes another. And Utapone no. is still alive. Paz on the backside. Take the Piercing Light. Does not take the Cocoon. But that's a two for zero as they go in. They still have one of their Guardian Angels available. They take the third inhibitor. Now all they have to do is wait. Utapone's going to try and drag them out a little bit farther. But they're just going to ignore him and go straight for the Nexus turrets. Here we go. Evie Bat came back with a Teleport. Each one's around the back trying to get damage onto Dara. Doesn't matter. Romne. Ooh, Romne and Dara both go down. Saros on the back side is down as well. There's only one tur Nexus turret left alive. Tussle is going to be doing a lot. You can't hit Utora. You can't be focusing down the tanks. It's not going to do you any good. There goes Paz. There goes the first Nexus turret. The second Nexus turret. Each one's the last one alive. Are they going to try and give it over? They are going to give it over. That's got a Guardian Angel, guys. It's going to take a little while. They are starting to crush down this Nexus, and they're going to do it. And we already see Rampage clapping. Game one going to Rampage. Yeah, what really decisive play out, out of Rampage, uh, really just knowing their victory conditions, knowing that as soon as they had that Baron and a Dragon, they didn't have to play Afraid. They could just march into the base and uh, take Detonation Focus Me down, pick up a pretty uh, convincing victory, 1-0. 
Absolutely. That was a fantastic ending fight. We saw the explosive cast come out from Paz. I'm sure it'll show a replay and we can talk about it a little bit more. But it pushed Evie into your team. He probably took at least six or seven turret shots during the fight, but it doesn't matter. That is a very tanky Nautilus. We saw Haunter's Maokai do similar things. Just sit there, take, I believe someone countered up. It was 20 turret shots from the Nexus turrets at the time. And he was just healing under them. Nautilus doesn't heal so much, but he's just going to walk through it as he strides through the enemy team. Yeah, that is definitely one of the weaknesses of Gragas that we've seen. You know, Gragas used to be a huge competitive pick. He's seeing some some play uh, once again, but with the changes to his ultimate um, recently where it has a set cast time no matter where you cast it. Previously, if you cast it closer to Gragas, it would fire instantly. Um, now it's much harder to catch out players at a professional level uh, and really... Uh, land those game-changing ultimates where you ult an AD carry into your team to be annihilated. And unfortunately, has not able to find the ultimate that he needed in order to maybe separate um, Rampage more. Rampage able to pick up that game uh, in convincing fa fashion. I especially liked how Rampage uh, focused on dragons throughout that fight, it, or throughout the course of the game. It didn't feel like uh, Detonation Focus Me ever had... Uh, a chance to really contest them around those dragon objectives and after scaling this up for so long getting to the that four stack uh, <laughs> rampage found a pretty easy victory absolutely and it looks like we're going to have a lot of interviews it looks like we are going to have one of our good friends okari joining us towards the end for the player interviews but we're going to turn it over to our japanese co-casters for just a minute as they start to go through one of the players from unsold stuff enti the support coming over just giving some ideas on exactly what what happened during that game and what it is that detonation can do to really bring it back but anyway so this this again Josh Joshi Howard and Zane Zen Zen Nelson coming at you live from Seattle this is the grand or excuse me the finals for the spring split playoffs in the League of Legends Japan League we're gonna take a short break and we'll be back for you with game two in just a few minutes しかしたメージ出せないので結構きつかったかなってでは瀬戸根翔吾カスミンはドラフトのところで少し変える必要があるのではないかとそういうことですねそうですねなるほどありがとうございますエンセンスならではの目線での意見語っていただきましたエンセ
And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the LJL Spring Finals between Detonation Focus Me and Rampage Gaming. As we just saw, Rampage Gaming did manage to take a fantastic first game off of Detonation Focus Me after having some very decisive play, a very cool composition coming out from Focus Me, but just weren't able to execute it to its full effectiveness. Yeah, I mean, we saw uh, the sort of cute uh, Camille first pick. Uh, getting and then going to flex it into the support role to try and surprise Rampage Gaming uh, didn't quite work out. You know, they had this great synergy where uh, they would hook shot in with the Camille and have the Shen ultimate stand united right on top of him for a quick engage. Uh, unfortunately, not quite enough to find the kills on Yutori uh, that they needed to, and Rampage took the game pretty pretty convincingly. Yeah, absolutely. Remind me a little bit of some of the strategies we used to see back when Evelyn and Twitch were very popular in the meta. You would see them come around the side, Shen would just ult them, and then suddenly, whoa, there was nobody there, but now there's two people all of a sudden. And so Vivid doing the same thing, able to stay alive for long enough to do what he needed to do, but unfortunately not long enough to outlive Yutori and Ramone as they were just around the, oh, excuse me, just around the back, able to do whatever they want. But yeah, we're... yeah, and it's going to be interesting to see how they adapt, uh, right, going into this game. I don't expect to see that Camille come out again. Uh, you know, was was kind of successful, but not quite what they were looking for. I would expect to see Detonation maybe pick up uh, what we talked about, a, a three-threat composition going into this next game, trying to get a bit more damage uh, out of their carries. See if they can pick up kills that way. Yeah, absolutely. I think that would be something really good. Uh, we did see Yutapone pick up a couple of kills, especially in that mid-game fight uh, as he was fighting both Dara and Ramane on his own. But, you know, you need, if you're going to have a tank like Shen, you need that pick to be protecting people. He's not the greatest of divers and it took him a long time. Anything else, something like a Renekton or even that Camille. Uh, in Utapone's hands would have been able to not only finish up Dara quickly but also bring down a Romney with him as they kept on going but they weren't able to do that he just had to slowly run around try and hit people with that TMI and, and was not enough as we start to move in um, it's gonna be interesting to like you said it's gonna be interesting to see how they adapt and how mentally resilient they are it did start off very poorly with that uh, two two for one kill situation as Paz came down to the bot lane that got turned around, won by Yutori, almost single-handedly. We didn't talk about this before, but he got that first kill onto Zeros without an assist. Right, yeah, just able to uh, have great clarity of mind during during a, a tense moment with a gank, uh, recognizing that Zeros, I, I believe he had taken minion aggro as well. Like He had to step into the bush because he was taking so much damage. Um, but Yutori just able to fire shot after shot into him, eventually picking up first blood. And uh, I don't recall, but did Yutori survive that, or did they just trade? I remember that they traded two for one, but I don't remember if Zara died or if Yutori died. But either way, uh, really solidly play out of the Rampage uh, to secure that first advantage. Yeah, exactly. And I, I don't quite remember, but there was another thing, is they just weren't able to capitalize on it later. Uh, Vivid still had his flash available after the altercation, and nobody on Rampage's side had their flash available after that, and they didn't capitalize on that as well as they wanted to. They tried, and God did Paz try. He spent so much time down in the bottom lane, but they were never able to convert that potential into actuality. They just had to keep trying, keep trying, but no, that's the power of Rampage's bot lane, as they just did everything everything they could in order to keep themselves as far ahead as possible. Yeah. Going into this next era phase, I definitely expect a lot of adaption for Detonation. Uh, not so much from Rampage, though. I think that they uh, looked very comfortable on all of the champions that they played. Uh, Ramone's Oriana, you know, we talked about it. We, we felt a little bit of a little bit iffy going into this game. You know, he's had some competitive practice on it. He's been playing that uh, for quite a while, but hasn't had the most stellar performance. Uh, he played pretty pretty big uh got some really great two-man shockwaves um on carries at key moments during that fight um Yutori Miyasi great as always on that Lucian pick um Rampage is going to do more of the same Detonation is the team that has to find uh, a different combination of champions to take out Rampage yeah and I think one thing that's interesting to compare Romney and Yutori and their ability to play these 
in these games is if Utori is a very loud carry, moving around, moving forward, dashing forward with uh, his with his E as often as he can, Ramane is a very quiet carry. He does solid plays, he gets shields where he needs to, but like you said, he had a couple of solid, you know, two, three man shockwaves in that game, but never did you see the giant faker kind of plays. He runs around and just does what he wants when he feels like it. He was a very with the team, very do what I need to, and it worked. It was a very, ultimately it was a very successful champion. We see these bands coming out. Uh, we see the Camille, interestingly. Evie did play that in their series up against Unsold Stuff, but they did let Lulu through, and when they had Lulu, Dar and Yutori absolutely ran away with that game. So this could be very interesting to see. They do pick up the Nautilus in return, though. Yeah. Uh, domination focused me, uh, continuing to stick with the three bands that they had in the last game. Uh, however, because Rampage uh, gets the first pick opportunity, um, ends up giving away the power pick Lulu, uh, it does look like DFM's going to hover that Lucian for Xeros to try and take that out of Yutori's hands. I like that pickup, and it is uh, possibly going to be the lock-in. Yeah, yes, I, I think that will that be. Out. That is something that is very good for uh, Detonation Focus Me to take away from Yutori, because he has had some uh, some fantastic success on that champion. We do see the Nautilus picked up for Utapone, probably for Utapone. It could also be going over to Vivid, or in a, some parallel universe, it could also go over to Paz. But it'll be interesting to see what Evie chooses to play for this game. He has games on a lot of tanks, a lot of different champions throughout the season. Uh, he's had very su uh, very successful games with Maokai and Poppy in the past, and even a little bit of Camille, but he's definitely had a little bit more success with the Nautilus throughout the season, and so the interesting to see what he picks. He doesn't have his Tom Kench to fall back on. I really wouldn't be surprised if we ended up seeing him go with something very standard, very simple, like the Poppy. Or, potentially, I'd really like to see a Renekton coming out for that, giving Evie another chance to potentially prove himself and that, that's interesting. We haven't seen, we haven't talked about Rengar at all yet because it's been picked or banned, mostly banned, throughout the entire LJL split. Yeah, but uh, in the context of this game, I actually really like it uh, from Detonation Focus Me. Uh, with the 280 carries uh, composition already picked out for Rampage, uh, Detonation really needs to pick, pick a target and just murder them as quickly as possible. Um, and so what that Rengar allows you to do is to use that on the hunt ultimate, uh, find a character that's that's caught out, especially in the early game, uh, and get a quick lead that way. So I definitely like that pick. Uh, we'll have to see what they support it with going into the phase two of the picks and bans. It does look like Rampage is going to go ahead and ban, uh, again, both teams going for mid lane bans. Uh, Rampage does not want to see uh, Saros's Echo. DFM, again, banning out both the Syndra and the Talon from uh, Ramadan. We might see that Orianna coming back from him. Yeah, oh, never mind. It was banned out. I was going to say, up until that point, Detonation Folks Me had the exact same bans this game as they had the first one, but they're switching it over to the Orianna this time. And so it's going to put a lot of pressure onto Ramane, who is a very quiet carry, could potentially be the weak link in terms of the pig ban phase as Focus Me starts to put more pressure down onto Rampage. Yeah, so let's see what Detonation Focus Me picks. They're hovering the Talia, and they will... Oh, man. You know how much I love Talia. I Please do. My girl. Eyebrows uh... is definitely one of your favorite champions. But real quick, they do end up locking that in, but I want to point to the Rampage banning out the Shen. Now, the Singe, do you mean? Yeah, the, the Singe, excuse me. Um, we've seen a little bit of Singe come out, but Utapone does not have that many games. He's got two to decent success. But with the Nautilus already picked up, sure, that can be flexed into the support, but that's not something you necessarily expect to see going over to the support. They are going to lock in that Maokai, who Evie has played with great uh, great strength throughout the season, doing very well on that champion, and a very good counter uh, to, Saros, or to Paz's Rengar. But it does leave an interesting thing. Banning Singe, it's, you already see a very likely top laner it can be flexed, but there are much stronger supports that could also be picked up, and it's I almost feel like it's a bit of a waste of a ban. Yeah. 
um, Singed, just an obnoxious champion to deal with in general. It doesn't like Rampage is going to round out the conversation, uh, picking up Ari for Ramane, another champion that he's played to decent success. Uh, Ari, not a champion that we see often in the West right now. Uh, she sort of has uh, damage problems, I guess is what I would say in the end game. Uh, sort of hits that weird balance between being a mage champion and an assassin champion. It doesn't like uh, Detonation Focus me going to pick up that Shen to round out their composition and rotate that to the top lane. So that will be vivid on the support Nautilus. Um, I like that choice. Uh, Shen into Maokai uh, is a pretty passive lane. However, Yutapon will have access to that Stand United once again uh, to influence the map. Uh, hopefully he'll see more success with it in this game. Yeah, 100%. And I think Detonation Focus, in terms of the pick ban phase, has won that phase again. Now, they won the first game of the pick ban phase, but they did not win the gameplay part of the first game, and that could come back to them. Because we saw, if we take a look at the bans that they placed out, they all had a very direct purpose, whereas Rampages felt a little bit more haphazard. You know, we saw the Tom Kench band, we saw the Syndra band, we saw the Malahar band. Those are all very comfortable, very strong picks that Rampage loves. And the Ariana, or Oriana and the Talon are also things that Romney plays, forcing him onto his fourth or fifth favorite champion. But, you know, again, I want to keep going back to that Singed band. It's potentially not the most useful thing. We saw it banned a lot against Unsold Stuff as well, so we ne never ended up getting to see... Um, unsold stuff actually bring that champion out and so we don't know exactly what can go on but let's go back Shen Rengar very strong combination uh, mm -hmm. Shen Talia Talia very strong combination they'll be able to run around very quickly find things and just keep them alive for a lot longer than they otherwise would with the stand united and yeah what I'm just I'm just curious to see how effectively they do it because Utapon is clearly putting a lot, picking up the triple rage bead once again. Both ADCs opting for long swords. This game I think will be a little bit more explosive if we see less of a tank line for both teams and a lot more damage coming out. Right, and it's it's going to come down uh, a lot to this early game uh, played out by both teams. Uh, Detonation Focus Me has the advantage of uh, the overall map pressure. They have the Weaver's Wall in the mid lane out of Talia to move between the lanes and uh, cut off escape groups and things like that. Uh, you can combo that with the Stand United to easily bring a four-man gank down in the bottom lane or even a five-man gank if Paz decides to join them with the On the Hunt. Um, however, uh, Rampage Gaming's team composition is really scary if they get an early lead uh, with two AD carries uh, as well as another ranged attacker in the mid lane. They can take down turrets incredibly quickly. Uh, if there's a lead, uh, Dara can use wild growth to keep uh, members alive uh, long enough to, to put out their full damage combo and really put the hurt on a detonation focus me. And so it's going to be really critical uh, for detonation focus me. They want to tie up the series that they keep uh, this bottom lane down from Yutori and Dara. Saris did something a little bit interesting there that might have escaped a lot of people's notice. She actually picked up one of the small raptors. Now, this isn't a huge deal, but I, I wonder, I don't actually know the answer to this, will that mean she hits level 2 off of the first wave? Uh, I couldn't tell you. We'll have to see. I do know that the one of the primary reasons why junglers have moved towards taking raptor camps early is because if you clear all the small raptors, you hit level two, and that allows you to clear the fat or the larger raptor a little bit faster and helps you clear. They also spawn two seconds earlier than the uh, buff camps. That is one more helpful thing. Absolutely, but and we're we're starting to see right here why you don't let Dara have Lulu. He, she is putting so much damage down onto the enemy bot lane. Look, Vivid is already down to his third health simply from the auto attacks coming out from that little Yordle, and it's a uh, already an eight CS lead. That's more than a full wave. That's way more minions that are here right now. So that could very easily potentially turn into a snowball if they're able to keep that up. But it could come back to bite them. Vivid earlier we I didn't mention this because I partly forgot, but. Vivid has most of his Nautilus games as support in the past 
uh, two or three weeks, and that's going to be something that they're likely very comfortable on, something very practiced right now, and he's going to know when to go in for those hooks. If he can find those hooks into Dara through the minion wave, it'll be very difficult, but also very impressive as I start to move around. It could be very good, and I like that. Did you see Tussle shooting the blast yes. cone over the wall? That keeps his bot lane so safe. And look right at this, there. he's... Yeah, this was actually an incredibly uh, strong start out of Rampage. Uh, one of the very typical jungle routes for Rengar is to try and speed to level 4, do the top camps, and then go come down to this bottom lane for a gank. Uh, however, uh, Tussle has already taken, he's already got vision on that side of the map with the Scuttle Crab taken early. So this is going to prevent Paz from getting an early gank down to the bottom lane, uh, which is something that he really wants to do against these poke-heavy composition. Um, so really smart jungle path by Tussle here uh, is going to make it difficult for DFM to get an advantage in the next couple of minutes. Yeah, and they see where he is now. We already see some pings going down onto where he is. It looks like he's going to try and go in a little bit anyway. Hook goes onto Yutori. He's forced to flash instantly, and that is very dangerous with Paz still around the back. They don't necessarily realize he's there. They're pinging towards him. Uh-oh, Laron is taking a lot of damage, too, in the mid lane. Look at all that damage coming out from Sarah's It's the charm, but there goes the cleanse. Gonna have to flash back out. Does end up taking him down. Tussle's trying to come in, but he doesn't have any flash. Neither does Utoria. They're gonna keep getting so many. There goes a second kill going over to Detonation. It's only four and a half minutes into the game. This is a complete turnaround, and there we go. Utopone's trying to get a third. I don't think he's gonna get that. This is a bit too early to start killing the Maokai. But still. Yeah. Decisive play. This is a different DFM than the one that we saw in the previous game. Um, you know, able to to make their strategies work. Uh, Sarah is picking up a solo kill on a Romani. I don't even know how that happens. Right? Um, yeah, onto Ari. Ari even has the Ignite. She's the one who's supposed to have the kill pressure, but cleansing the charm right there and able to get that last uh, Q off into the Ari is going to be really big as they start to pick, build this gold lead. Yeah. Oh no, pings down onto Tussle. Is look like he's going to get out of there just in time. Quick and easy steal for him. But yeah, let's take a look at that one more time. They get a lot of damage as the combo comes out as the rocks. And there we go, another flash coming out. Tussle's not there quite in time to either block it or really get damage down to Sarah. So that is just 100% a win going over to Detonation. And Saros now has picked up uh, a second Dorn's Ring and a Null Magic Mantle. It's going to be very difficult for Ramane in a solo lane to be able to mitigate uh, that victory. Uh, Saros now probably going to, he has a level 6, likely going to shove out the wave here shortly and look for that first Weaver's Wall roam which can be so important. Oh, there we go. Uh, a lot more damage game. going in. Misses the charm. That's a one trade there in the mid lane for Saros. Ramane cannot take another one of those. Yeah, and this Halea is so practiced. Um, you can see one of the unique properties of some of the most popular uh, mid laners in the game right now. Champions like Syndra and like uh, Talia and like Ari is their ability to cast while moving. Um, and Saros has just been doing a fantastic job of weaving in and out, uh, dodging Ramane's abilities while putting down pressure as, of his own. Mm -hmm, 100%. We do see... Uh, not a whole lot else going on right now, but we talked about the early strength that Rampage had in that game, and it's already lost due to a couple misplays in the lanes, getting hooked up by Yutori, getting destroyed by Ramane, and so it's going to be very difficult for them to really build back up, especially against this team that really spikes very hard in the mid-game. And that's also when Rampage's team is supposed to spike as well. Right, and you can see Saras uh -oh. hovering down. Weaver's Wall coming up behind them. Utoria and Dara are going to be in a bad spot. They don't have a flash on them. There goes the Stand United. There's five members down here. Here comes a Teleport. Utoria ends up going down, but they're going to try and get one back. Paz is taking up a couple of turret shots, but it's not going to be enough to bring him down, and that is going to be the end of that story as they pick up another kill onto Utoria as all five members of Detonation Focus Me are down here in this ball lane. Yeah, and this seems to be something that they like to do to work as a team. That combination... Uh, power play with the stand united able to uh, really surprise the bottom lane and just put out so much pressure. However, we have to talk about uh, this play. Utapon used his teleport in the top lane earlier, so that's a lot of damage going out of the turret. Uh, Evie is just smashing away at it. Yeah, and it's going to take him a little while, and you know, Maokai's not necessarily known for his ability to crush down turrets, but if you give him that much time, we already saw that he took 
over half of it, and he could very well take the rest of it by the time Utapone even gets back to lane. Chooses not to, not sure where everybody else is, and didn't see the back timings. But we always talk about Rampage and how they need Utori to be ahead in order for them to really function as the team that they want to be. But he's behind now. He's 0 2, does not have the CS lead he started the game with. It's been narrowed down to less than 5. And it's going to be very difficult for him with a gold deficit, something he's not used to having, to really carry the games like he's been trying to do for the past you know, several seasons. Yeah. One thing that is in Rampage's favor, however, is that uh, DFM did not get nearly as much out of the five-man gank as maybe they would have liked. Uh, despite committing uh, three ultimates uh, and five members down in the bottom lane, they only got, uh, what, a single kill? And they weren't even able to secure the bottom lane turret or the ocean drake, uh, which were key objectives that they would have liked to take immediately afterwards. Rampage did a great job of uh, sending as many members bot lane as they could to defend the turret, uh, which means that Rampage has a slight edge in the top lane, uh, with Evie being a, a solid uh, amount of experience as well as CS against Utapon. Yeah, here we go. Vivid's trying to come back around the side. They're looking for a repeat gank. Yutori has his flashback up, and Dara hasn't used his yet. They do see Paz and Vivid, but they are still going to have to back away, because Yuz can't deal with that right now. Stand United isn't up, so it would be a 3v2. But Tussle's going to start to move and hopefully try to equalize the turret as we give the first turret blood over to Zeros. That's a lot of gold. 650 gold. Going out to an AC. Oh, here comes a dive onto Yutapon. They do get the taunt, and he does have to flash away. Now, that is going to be a turret trade very quickly. But with Hustle up in the top lane, Detonation Focus means like, all right, well, we'll take the two for one any day. Buy one, get one free. Zeros is going to back, <laughs> and there's not a whole lot that Rampage can do about it. Yeah. Uh, easy, easy two for one turret take. I appreciate, I want to talk about the timing of that uh, four man threatened dive by DFM was really smart. Uh, they send back Rengar, and they have Talia push up the wave and then move towards the bottom lane, right about when Vivid and Zoroast are hitting level 6. Uh, so they have the ultimate advantage over Dara and Yutori already. Um, smartly, Yutori and Dara realize that they can't possibly deal with that much threat, so they do back off and uh, give away the turret trade. But really smart timing uh, from Detonation Focus me this game. They're playing the map uh, much better than they were in the previous game. Absolutely, and we we aren't seeing their gold lead translating yet into any actual item lead. We do see in the bot lane, both the ADCs have the same items, but Zeros picks up a couple of extra wards for his team, as we do see the lane swap that customarily comes after their first turrets are taken. But um, there's not a big lead in the mid lane, it's the difference of boots to uh, Mercury trade, which is fairly significant. But the ADCs are at the same spot. The top laners are at very similar spots. You know, that's partly due to the massive farm advantage that Evie has over Utapone at the moment. But the only real differences that we're seeing are starting to come from the jungle and the mid lane. Where each of those items, the Mercury treads over the lack of boots, or just the regular boots, is actually easily a gold difference of nearly, I believe it's like a thousand gold. Yeah, should be. Um, well, at least the Rift Herald. I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, doesn't look like Tesla really wants to take that. Just um, maybe just doing like an auto attack move and then accidentally hitting it on his way up the river. Yeah, testing the waters a little bit. See how the other team reacts. We do see Vivid and Paz coming back here to, you know, reestablish vision control, and they're going to be able to take that up and possibly take the Rift Herald for themselves. That's not something we see in competitive play all that often but with a character like Rengar. It becomes a lot more valuable. Uh oh. Zeros goes on to Utori, takes a lot of damage. It's the calling down onto Dara. Dara commits the wild growth. There goes the ultimate from Utori, getting a lot of damage back onto Zeros, but he does have to flash out as the pass starts coming very close. Uh oh, here comes the teleport from Evie as well. They're gonna get around the back. Stand United is going down onto Rengar. Zeros is in a bad spot. He only has a flash available. Dara's getting a lot of damage. Paz is the first one to go down. Utapone's life is straight as well. Tussle's down as well, but this is uh, going huge for Rampage. They're getting another one. Utapone is already dead. Excuse me. Vivid's the next one, and he might not have a whole lot of area to go left either. He has to commit his flash, and that is a four for one trade right now. Now, we have to see exactly what Rampage does with this. With only Zeros left alive, they say he's the faker of Japan, but he's He's gonna have to be more than faker if he wants to stop them from doing what they want here. Yeah, uh, Detonation focused me just a little bit too slow on the draw there. 
I uh, thought that they had the advantage uh, with numbers, but a fantastic teleport uh, does turn around the fight. You can see uh, Maokai starts to teleport right now with Zerost already down to like 100 HP. Um, it's going to come behind them and really trap them in this corner. Ari also a quicker roam up than Talia. Uh, and just the amount of burst damage, they had great focus, able to pick up two really quickly, and then with a quick... Uh, numbers advantage, able to clean up the rest of the fight. A uh, four for zero for them. A four for one, excuse me. And I have to question the stand United by Utapone onto Paz's Rengar of all players. Well, yes, of course, Rengar is very strong at this point, and he's still in his ultimate. Zerost was nearly dead. He still had his flash available, and with a little bit more health, he might have been able to turn around. He does have the Blade of the Rune complete. Blade of the Ruined King completed now. Don't remember if it was at that point, but that's still a lot of damage that you lost off of your AD carry simply because you chose to let him die. Yeah, uh, definitely an interesting choice there. I think maybe Utapond thinking of, uh, you know, thinking too much of the cool play, you know. I'm going to submarine in, like a <laughs> submarine twitch, you know, I'm going to stand united on the stealth character. Not actually the greatest choice, uh, optimal choice that he could have made there. Uh, yeah. He does pay for it in the trade, and now DFM and RPG within a thousand gold of each other. And this is, we are seeing once again, there's not a big difference in the AD carries. And Yutori, and we're going to keep talking about Yutori, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think it's possible for us not to in this series, but Yutori's a little bit down. He has the same Blade of the Rune King, but he hasn't really necessarily spent a lot of the gold that he's sitting on. He got a lot of those assists. He's starting to get a lot of gold into his hands. He's starting to get a lot more farm. They're, look at that. They're just giving farm over to him because they know he's the one that needs it. But they're starting to move down towards this mid lane. They're going to get some decent damage down onto this mid turret. Never mind. They're going to back away. Yeah, we talk about, though, uh, you know, the strength of having uh, Graves as your jungler. You have two essentially two AD carries on your team, you can just blast down turrets from range. Uh, if DFM is, you know, maybe a little bit slow on the rotation, even just a couple auto attacks, it starts to really hurt and really chunk down those towers. Yeah, and with 40 seconds left on the next dragon coming up, this mid lane turret could be very valuable as you reduce the number of places for your opposing team to retreat to. RPG is not in a spot to necessarily contest revision right now, with only 30 seconds, they probably don't think they're in his position to contest, even though they're only a thousand gold apart. Yeah. Saros, you can see, uh, hovering around the side, threatening the Weaver's Wall, uh, looking to potentially make a play down to the bottom lane, and Ramune decides against it, though, uh, just trying to secure as much vision around this dragon as possible. And with the dragon being a cloud dragon, normally a lot of teams don't necessarily prioritize a cloud dragon, but that's a very, very, very valuable dragon for a character like Rengar, who wants to be able to run around and find picks as easily as possible. Tussle, too afraid to go into his jungle without even testing things with that W, is not going to be in there in time to even attempt to steal. Yeah, look at that ward coverage out of DFM before they make that play. Uh, just, like, is that every bush but one? <laughs> in the bot side jungle uh, for RPG covered with red side wards. Really well played out of DFM to secure that objective. And now they're going to have to stick around a little bit longer as RPG's starting to put a little bit of pressure towards the mid lane. Romney has been split pushing quite a bit, but they did spot him out with a ward towards the Rampage's red buff. But they're starting to move. They're looking to try and take a little bit more control of this game by making the first move as you see a bunch of uh, opposing players back. And right now, Paz is completing the back. There's not a whole lot available. And there's the calling coming out from Zerost. And Rampage is going to have to be very... Uh, what's the term? They have to be very decisive right now. If they want to commit for this mid lane turret, because here comes Paz. He's going to activate that ultimate. They're going to start looking for it. Are we going to see anything come out? There is a flash blown from Vivid. But nothing else is committed beyond that. Yeah, a great uh -oh. charm from Ramane stops the aggression. Yeah, good job picking up some of that, but it's a uh, there's a lot of damage going on this turret, and Utapon is still pushing in the bot lane. He has a lot of push power with the TM on the bomby Cinder. 
but it needs to be matched real quick. There we go. Avery's going very deep onto Zeros in the back line. Paz and Zeros in a very bad spot. Sandy Knight is going to come around. Yuta Pone is trying to find any taunt. He misses onto Dara as Dara flashes away. And they're starting to get a lot of damage down here into Tussle on the opposite side. He's going to have to get for the Blast Cone. He's going to see if he can get around, but they, no, they don't need to. They just get the kill onto Vivid. Paz is looking around the side, looking for something, but he has no flash available, and that is just going to be a one for zero as they start to move around. We we'll have to see. I think Rampage is still in a position to start moving for this mid lane turret as they start coming around. Romney does not have his ultimate, but he does have his flash. And as they regroup as a larger force, they could potentially take this very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, really decisive play out of Rampage, recognizing that despite uh, Shen's global pressure with the Stand United, it is still a three or four second channel uh, for him to join the fight. So if you can make uh, an aggressive play within those three seconds and win the fight, essentially uh, before Shen arrives, uh, that's one way to defeat the split push. And they proved it right there. Uh, eventually able to take out Vivid, not able to find the turret that they maybe would have wanted to. Uh, but a very successful dive, nonetheless. And I just want to pull this out. I didn't notice this before because it's being blocked by my auto mod, but we do have a welcome guest in, in the chat right now. Welcome. Thank you for joining us, Irene. As for how much I've been following the Japanese scene, it's been off and on over the past couple of years. I've been doing my best to keep up to date with what's going on recently because of how interesting it has been this season as Rampage uh, focused me and uh, Unsold Stuff has all taken games off of each other. That's the first time we've seen three teams in the LJL really having a strong presence as before. It's mostly just been Rampage and Detonation Focus Me trading games. And before that, it was a uh, Detonation Focus Me and their sister team, whose name escapes me right now. But it's been a lot of fun watching this scene slowly grow. Yeah, I, I really liked uh, watching the Best of Five series evolve uh, between Unsung or, uh, Unsold Stuff Gaming and Rampage uh, in order to make it here to the finals. Um, it's it's tough. You can see so much of how these players have adapted and grown. Uh, Yutori Miyasi becoming this huge, you know, presence in this scene that you have to deal with. Uh, and Detonation Focus Me looking to find a way to do that. Evie now... Oh, yeah, he does oh, go down onto, uh, onto Paz. He's in a bad spot. Dara's getting caught up on the other side. The Weaver's Wall is going to not split the fight. They're going to put people on the wrong side. They're going to be able to run away, but Dara is finally taking down Yutori Miyashi on the other side. He does use his flesh, but Zeros is going forward. We don't see him go aggressive very often. He does finally pick it up, but here comes Romney and Tulsa. They're trying to get a little bit back. Evie is taking a lot of damage. He doesn't have the eventual Maelstrom anymore. They do pick one back up onto Zeros, but they're going to be able to get away. Romney is going back in. He's going in. He does finally pick up Zeros, and that's both carries dead for Detonation Focus Me as Romney is still moving around. He doesn't have a whole lot left with the double buffs. He still prevents a very valid threat. Yeah, Rampage snatches a stalemate from the jaws of defeat, in the words <laughs> of Hamilton. No, we, t we um, promised ourselves able... we wouldn't do that. <laughs> 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 but here we go, there we go. Grummy's getting a lot of damage onto Paz. Paz comes a little bit forward. There's not a whole lot left for him to do. Yeah, uh, you know, at the first, I thought that Nation Focus Me was in a huge amount of trouble with the flank from Evie, but they just didn't have the numbers there uh, right away. Uh, that Nation Focus Me able to uh, quickly realize that, hey, uh, Tussle is way up in the top line. We can turn this around, perhaps. Um, get a great hook onto Dara. Uh, brings him low pretty quickly. Uh, with the ultimate from Saros, able to lock people up. Uh, a fantastic ultimate, by the way, from Vivid. Uh, locks up uh, the Varus just long enough to secure the kill. Um, however, Romani and Tussle on the back line, able to kite it out and secure a last couple of kills to save their bottom, or save their mid lane turret, excuse me. Yeah, and Ramone really did. That was pr one of the biggest plays we've seen him make throughout the series that we've been watching. They do pick up the middle lane turret as well during that replay, but it's uh, really impressive to see even he's starting to become that loud carry that is often what you need at this level of play. Gold is se only separated by less than 100 gold at this point, and with a lot of items starting to come down onto Ramone's R, picking up the Leandre's Torment and near uh, nearly completed... What do you call it? Runin's Hurricane starting to be built up by Yutori. These fights aren't being bursted out quickly enough by Focus Me for them to really turn it into anything more. Yeah. Uh, they really want to find fights. They want to be the aggressors, basically. That Nation Focus Me uh, would love to see a fight where uh, Paz gets the on the hunt ultimate onto ideally a single target at Rampage, um, burst them down really quickly, perhaps with a stand united on top of it, uh, and then win the fight from there. They haven't been able to play that style of game that they'd like to play. Uh, they've been playing very well, 
uh, and managed to bring the gold lead up. But if they can find that fight, they'll definitely be able to see more success. Absolutely. And let's take a look at the builds one more time. You start to see those items coming out. The biggest thing that's sticking out to me right now is taking a look at what is sitting in Paz's inventory. He has the warrior enchant on his jungler item, but he also has a Randuins. Now, we've talked a couple times a little bit about how much damage is coming out from these two uh, what do you call these two ADCs? One in the jungle, one is the ADC. But here we go. Paz is going to get caught out. He gets picked up by the W from Evie. He's taking a lot of damage. The Stand United is very quickly committed. And here comes Utapon back around the side. Weaver as well is going to separate the fight. Evie needs to find his way out all on his own. But here comes Romney and Utori around the side. There goes the Dredge on Utori taking so much damage. He's taunted up. He's stunned up. But there comes a wild growth. He finally does go down. But there's still plenty of damage coming around the side. Dara is doing what he can. Romney is going to be able to get out. And Utapon and Dara, the only two left, they do get. Uh, out just fine and what turned out as a pick for RPGs turns very quickly around into a two picks by detonation yeah what a great turnaround from uh, detonation focus me I have to shout out to Saros's fantastic weavers wall uh, really messing up with rampages strategy you know they wanted to all run in behind uh, Evie behind their big uh, Maokai but they couldn't do that because they were separated uh, by a wall there all of a sudden um, yeah, I don't... and fantastic dredge line picks up two kills uh, yeah when we see the replay as i'm sure it's going to come up i want us to pay special attention to tussle keep that in mind as we see exactly what he does during that fight but we do see i believe that was another drag just picked up there by detonation folks i mean that's their second ocean dragon of the game and the third overall they do get a little bit of a gold lead they do pick up a dragon, but as we've talked about before, during their long drawn out fights, they aren't necessarily picking up enough off of them. Yeah, look at Tussle's position on the map right now. He's way deep in enemy territory. Uh, not sure that that's where he wants to be. It looks like he was looking for a pick onto Paz. Now, uh -oh, gonna just he might go ahead and take that red Saros buff. Or get picked himself. They're fighting each other. Neither of them expect them to be there. Saros is taking a lot of damage. The full black cleaver prox is already down on him, and this might be the one v one. He does pick it up. Romney is around the side, not dredge line by Rom or by Vivid. Excuse me, but here comes a telep coming out. Utapone sees Utori's out of position. He still has his flash available and his heal, but they don't necessarily see him. And Rangar is probably gonna be the first one to pick it up. They do pick it up, and that is a one for one trade overall. Just completely separated on the map but there's a lot as they move around here tussle goes forward gets dredge line very quickly takes the wild growth vivid is stuck on the wall as evie's in the front line that's exactly where he wants to be utapon gets into the back line finally but romney's on the other side trying to kite out paths they're moving around they're moving around and maokai is doing a great job gets down onto utapon he's bursted very quickly there goes zeros is charmed up he gets hit by both parts of the q coming off from ari and they're still going forward tussle has a red buff he does get the first one onto vivid but there's romney once again becoming the loud carry we want tussle's finding one more auto attack onto vivid and that could be very big that is a four for one Wow, Rampage playing decisively, uh, you know, off the back end of that fight. Yes, they lost their 80 carry, but who needs it when you have a second? Exactly. Uh, able to bring out so much damage and run straight to the Baron. And here we go. They're going to start it right up. This could potentially be a 50-50. There comes the Weavers while not really doing as much as they want, except keeping people right in line for that Baron coming out. But they are going to go for the 50-50. Paz doesn't have his ultimate or his flash. He's going to have to commit very hard, but he still has a very good chance of taking this. Saros is doing some good damage around the side, and Baron is still at 1,000 health. Here comes a Stan United. Evie goes over the wall. They do finally pick it up for a Rampage. Evie might not be where he wants to be as they start moving around. He doesn't have his flash available, and they are probably going to slowly pick him up. But here comes Dara. Without having vision on the top side of the map, that is fantastic as they move around. They're able to keep the crazy aggressive movement from Evie alive. Yeah, and Rampage has to be feeling good about that. Uh, able to pick up a Baron off the stack of that fight. Um, although it's still anyone's game. And here we can see the uh, just immense damage out of Graves at this point in the game. Yeah, and I want to... Saros was a little bit slow on the draw right there, but Graves is never. He's got that quick draw, but here we go. Utori's in a bad spot. We know what happens here. Rengar sees a low health target. Not a whole lot out. He does commit the heal to it. Don't know if that was his best idea. And this could have been very different if, again, Red Team had been a little bit quicker on the draw. Tussle gets a great flash, getting some good damage, but they do charm pass, and that stops from being involved in a lot. The taunt does miss again, and they do see a lot, and we do see there's a great charm picking up right here from Romney. Gets it onto Zeros. Does a lot of damage and he flashes into the other part. The Leandri's burn comes out and with the red buff on a, a member on your ADC, there's not a whole lot left for you to do. That slow is just going to slowly grind you down. Zerost actually also unfortunately misses the uh, E to dash over the wall into safety. Unable to find that. 
uh, RPG now looking to use their Baron buff to take down this mid lane and maybe put pressure on this uh, dragon as well. Will DFM, or DFM be able to find the engage that they need to stop this push? This could be. They do have some great uh, wave clear coming out. Uh-oh, Charmland's on to Utapone. Good damage going on down there. That's half of his health bar just taking off of one charm. Yeah, ever since the changes to Ari uh, way back in the assassination or mage update where the charm increases the amount of damage that enemies take uh, she's been much scarier you know you land that single charm you do so much damage uh, even onto a tanky character like shen completely agree as we start to move around a little bit more their blue team is going to start moving down into the bottom lane jungle and here we see the second adc doing a lot of damage already taking about a quarter of the turret's health and with the other one here now this turret's not long for this world <laughs> Yeah, uh, RPG smartly, you know, using their map movements around the map, they go to wherever the minions are, uh, pick up easy kills. Uh oh, there kills. they go onto Utapone. There gets a lot of damage reduction coming out from that W, but Evie's just kind of healing up a little bit under this turret, not even taking that much damage. Paz is on the side looking for on the, not on the, yeah, on the hunt. But here he goes. He's going to come in trying to find one more. He's, yes, I want to. No, I don't. Yes, I want to. But then he ends up not committing with the ultimate down that is a major engage tool no longer available for detonation. Yeah, and it's so hard. Uh, uh oh, Evie goes in, gets onto Sarah. There's a stand United, goes down onto that mid laner. There's a lot going on. He's taken down very low, and that could be the 5v4 that they need. Evie is still alive. Tussle is still alive. And they keep going. They pick up the first one. Paz and Vivir are trying to clear this war, but that's not what you need to do. Here goes the. Uh, inhibitor turret going down as they start to move forward. Tussle wants Paz, but he's not going to be able to find one. They're just going to settle for the inhibitor. Uh, this could be very interesting to see whether they go forward or backward. They do choose to go backward with the Cloud Dragon up. This could be a very useful time. He misses that quick draw, and no punish for it. Yeah. DFM uh, not able to really commit to any fights with the Rengar ultimate down. It's so difficult for uh, DFM to find the targets that they need to find. Um, Without the Rengar ultimate stuck in the base with no uh, bushes to go to, Paz just isn't able to really be a factor in that fight. And Evie is so tanky at this point, able to just tank turret shot after turret shot with the Maokai passive healing him, keeping him alive. Uh, does get a ton of damage onto Saros, pushing him way out of the fight so he has to leave. And then the uh, clutch redemption, uh, healing all five members of RPG, keeping them nice and healthy for the dive. The subsequent uh, inhibitor take. Yeah, and I'll, I'm curious to see what the fights will go on, like especially as we're starting to hit, you know, we're starting to get into early late game as we start to see the 30 minute mark roll around. The dancing fights that we saw the previous or the, in the previous set that these guys played against each other, not these guys, uh, excuse me, when Rampage and Unsold's tough, we saw very dancey fights by light players moving around as they're trying to find the committal that you need to do in order to really find the last part of the game. And with so much poke coming out and very limited engage tools for both teams, basically one team needs to go ham, they need to hard commit, and so if you can't soft commit to a fight, which they can't really do very well, we're going to see something very explosive, and hopefully not too much of a ballet. I'd be down yeah. for some uh, epic crew battles though, break it down. Yeah, definitely Josh. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that, was, that was something, uh, that is some something of a change from the games that we saw on Wednesday. And it might just be because these two teams have a history. You know, you really want to beat the, these guys. Uh, there's a rivalry between Rampage Gaming and uh, Detonation Focus Me. They're willing to go ham. They're committing everything. Uh, Detonation looking to defend this turret. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to with the culling down. This next wave is going to be tricky. This could be very interesting. Romney goes forward, misses the trial into Saros, and... Uh... That'll be it, but it will be enough to pick up this turret as they start moving forward. Pick up another gun, and they go on to Vivid. Evie goes for it. He comes to stand United on the backside, but Paz does have everything. He tries to get onto Romney, who flashes immediately out. There's so much damage going on that jungle. The damage reduction coming out for the W is huge, but Evie's still on the front line. He tore, he's captured up. He flashes out. Clutch d dodge on your own redemption, but it's not going to matter when you're already so far ahead. There's only one member down so far. Tuzzle's going to try and find Paz, but, you know... Oh no! Misses the Q onto the wall, and he's just going to be snared up. Paz should be able to get away at this point, but meanwhile, on the other side of the map, we're going back to the inhibitor turret, and that's going to be the second inhibitor going down. Yeah, and you're really seeing the power of the Lulu pick in these fights. Uh, so much healing and, and savior potential uh -oh. with the wild growth and the redemption. 
Yeah, there we go. Paz is still alive, and with the red buff starting to heal him up very quickly, we could see a re-engage in just a moment as Rampage is staying for a long time. They don't realize that Paz is here, and Yutori's on the wrong side. There he goes, taking a lot of damage. He gets brought down very quickly. Utapon and Paz are still right in the middle of it. Paz does end up trading his life. Evie's trying to walk away, but Tussle is so much damage. He's putting it down onto Utapon right now. Evie goes back with a W into the enemy team, not able to pick up anything else off of that collateral damage. But they're going to be happy with a two-for-one trade anyway. Yeah, a bit of a... Cheeky play from Paz. You know, he was going to recall, decided, hey, I can pick up this red buff. Uh, sees the, the flank engage, but at this point, uh, DFM are just not in a position to fight. And with Baron live, RPG is going to go ahead and go for the quick teleport uh, while two members of DFM are stuck in the base. Yeah, and I think... I, I really want to think about what Paz was thinking there, because he saw Tussle do the same thing. You're sitting in the enemy red buff for a long time, and hey, it worked for him. He picked up Saros. Why can't it work for me? Well, it did. You got the Yutori, but this time he was with a team. Yeah, and uh, again, I want to go back and talk about the power of Gara's Lulu so far. Uh, doing so much healing, so much for the team. Uh, Detonation focused me, you know, their game plan going into this game is find a single target uh, with a Nautilus hook, with a Rengar ultimate, with a Shen ultimate on top of that. Find a single target and murder them down uh, before they can get their abilities off. However, uh, between the healing uh, and the shields from Wild Growth, the uh, Lulu E, as well as the Redemption and the Locket, it's just so hard at this point uh, to kill a single member of Ram Rampage. And I, I just don't know if Detonation Focus Me can find that single kill that they need to in order to win a fight at this point. And it's really exciting too. It's not just Yutori that's, you know, really carrying this game. Ramane has stepped up beyond, I think, what most of us thought he was really capable of. As he's 4, 1, and 10 compared to Yutori's 0, 6, and 7. Yutori doesn't even have a CS lead. That doesn't happen. But here we go. Avi's on the other side looking for a little bit of engage. But real quick, let's take a look at Yutori's uh, inventory right now. We were talking about how he's often going for the team fight build with the Runin's Hurricane, but this time he has a Phantom Dancer because he's just trying to keep himself alive. It doesn't matter if uh, you know if your auto attacks hurt if you don't get to do any of them. But with the Phantom Dancer's damage reduction onto whatever target you last auto attacked, that's definitely going to be Paz. It's going to be a lot more difficult for them to really jump onto him and really get the damage that they need. Yeah, and, and at this point, you know, you already have... Uh, oh, there we go. Evie's on to Vivid. Vivid's taking a lot of damage. He's taken down very quickly. Wivers Wall is separating the two teams. Utapon and D Paz are on the wrong side. Tussle's going to go in. Does get taunted up by Utapon, but Paz still can't do anything. He's just now starting to get damage in this fight, and he's taking as much damage as he's giving. There goes Saros on the other side. The flash forward by Evie is going to be the triple kill going over to Utori, finally getting himself on the board. But that could be the end of the game as we're starting to get into the 36th minute. That's two inhibitors. There's a first Nexus turret. They're already starting to cheer. Look at how happy they are, except for Dara. Always a serious one. But we're going to get the first Nexus turret, the second Nexus turret, and that is Rampage going up 2 0. Wow. Like, really well played by Rampage. You know, they are showing a, a level of decisiveness and team cohesion that we haven't really uh, seen before. Just playing good, smart, solid League of Legends. You know, I thought going into this game, I was a little bit worried about their team composition. You know, um, did they have the the tanks? Uh, if they got behind, they might be in a bit of trouble, but they played their team composition uh, beautifully. The Lulu pick was incredibly important in keeping uh, just singular members alive again and again. Paz uh, uh, was not able to find the single characters that he wanted to because they grouped so well and all in all a stellar game out of rampage yeah it was really good to see anybody other than utori really stepping up and evi and ramane who have historically not done that as much are going in. but here we're going to take a look at another replay and paz is stuck here look at how much damage he does in this fight just no. not anything <laughs> yeah he's stayed there for so long i believe he took a charm but either way when your rangar can't do anything even after committing the stand united to him he's just standing along the outside it it doesn't matter even if he was the most fed character in the world rangar or even with no kills rangar would still do plenty of damage in the middle of the enemy team but he couldn't get there
Yeah, Detonation Focus Me really needs to... I, I don't know, they have to pull out something, right? Uh, being down 0-2, all the pressure's on them. Ooh, I don't cosplay. know... Yeah, right? They, they need to find <laughs> um, some sort of pick. This this team composition that they've used revolving around globals, using the Shen ultimate uh, in combination with this very aggressive diving champion, it hasn't been working for them. Uh, they need to pick up something else, and quickly. Yeah, and it's it's very difficult when you're down 0-2 and seeing how strong. You even had a lead. They had a great lead at the beginning of that game, but they haven't weren't able to do anything with it. And their team compositions, again, I am very confident they have won the pick ban phase both games so far. But yeah. it's it's not enough. You need to back up your great team composition with better gameplay. And if they aren't able to do it, you know, uh, what was it? Seros, the faker of Japan, not able to make the plays he needs to. He got a great play on Ramane early in the game. He moves around, but his weaver's walls... Mm. Not good. Not good. Yeah, not quite good enough. Uh, splitting up the team a couple times, but not with enough members of his team on the right side. Yeah, and it's and we, we're going to get a little bit of an interview here with a, one of the members of 7th Heaven. Unfortunately, I don't recognize. I know it was just on the screen a couple of moments ago, but he's uh, you know just going to have to talk about exactly what happened, see what it is that Detonation Focus Me has to do to turn this around, because it is not going well for them. They're going to have to really find a way to pick up the pace, and I think we might have to see a little bit harder carry champions going over to people like Utapone and to Saros. They gave Zeros a couple of tries. They gave um, their jungler Paz a couple of tries. They gave Vivid a bit of a try, but those characters weren't doing any damage. T Tank Rengar does damage, but not enough, especially when he's behind. Especially when you block him off with your own Weaver as well. So they're going to have to try and find a couple of different players to really step up. And I'd like to see it coming from the top lane. Yeah. Again, we're going to take a short break. I'm Zane Zenzen Nelson, joined by Josh Joshi Howard. Uh, we'll be back with more coverage of Game 3 of the LGL Finals. Stay tuned. ジョバンニ、DFMが分かん。どんなにユリを取ってもアラシジ戦はエビ選手のTPから続けてのローテーションとかのダラ選手のワードのミスが本当に素晴らしくてエビ選手のTPを取る場所とか全部呼びされていることで本当にチームとしてのレベルが高いなと感じましたチームとしてのレベルが非常にランペイ高いとだからこそですかね今回ゆとりもやしをジョバン抑えましたよね狙っていったにもかかわらずそれでも勝ちき
And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is once again Joshua Joshi Howard coming at you live from Seattle, Washington, casting Game 3 of Detonation Focus Me versus Rampage. Rampage has already gotten up 2-0 throughout this series, and we're going to get into the third game. We've seen some very interesting team compositions coming out uh, from Detonation Focus Me, and again, I can't say this enough, I think they've had fantastic compositions, they have a clear goal, but unfortunately they are not able to convert it into something more final, simply because Rampage has been out maneuvering them on the map. Completely agree with you, Josh. Detonation Focus Me really needs to look to uh, maybe change up their style a little bit. You know, they've been playing these team compositions that are very team-oriented, where they get a team member advantage, maybe four or five members on the map in one place, uh, and then try to crush down Rampage Gaming. However, I mean, Rampage has just been doing a great job of, you know, staying strong, staying steady through that powerful mid-game, and then this coming out on top with superior team fighting. And uh, if your detonation focused me, you know, you're back on the ropes, you need to find some sort of adaptation in order to bring this back to two, two to one. Yeah, and it's going to be a long road for Detonation Focus Me if they really want to come back and prove that they are the better team. Again, they've been back and forth over the past couple of seasons. It's uh, slowly been going in Rampage's way uh, a little bit, but it's uh, you know it's starting to become bigger and bigger. And as Rampage, if they're able to take the second, um, the second championship in a row, this could be really big as we start going into you know midseason Invitational and the summer split. Yeah, and I I wonder, I'm really curious what that adaption is going to be at a detonation focus me. Uh, they have a couple options. Uh, we did mention that they have the substitute jungler Shrimp, uh, who is well known for being on several teams, both in the NA Challenger series and in the NA LCS. We might see him come out. Uh, maybe the adaption comes from them uh, picking different champions, maybe putting Utapon on a more uh, carry or a stronger pushing top laner. Uh, that player is well known for being a, a strong force on their team. However, being relegated to the likes of Shen uh, makes his ability to dominate a 1v1 much uh, weaker. So we might see him play something else. We might see Shrimp. I, I don't know, but I'm excited for this game three. I wanna see what they can pull out uh, as their last ditch effort to overcome Rampage. And on the other side, what a story it'll be if Rampage just manages to 3-0 the series. That's something that we haven't seen between these teams basically ever. The closest we saw was in uh, the first time that these guys played each other during the regular season. I believe it was back in like week four. Excuse me, it was in week one. It was the first game of the entire split. Detonation just ran over them. They 2 of them very quickly in two relatively quick games. And then next time they came back, they had to fight for it. Eventually did go Rampage's way. But Detonation has been up for the past, um, over the entire spring split in the round robin. They've been able to dominate more teams more quickly. And in fact, the only reason why they are actually up on Rampage in the split overall, because they did have both fantastic splits, they both ended 8-2, and two, is because Detonation won a single game more than Rampage did. And it was simply because of the fact that Rampage did not take a game they got crushed in the first time that they played each other. Right, and it would mean so much, much, so much uh, to Rampage to you know overcome that hurdle, uh, prove that they are the best team uh, decisively in the LGL for this season, and move on uh, to the midseason Invitational. What a great story that would be! Um, I'd love to see their success. Uh, sort of cascade into the international scene. As we see, though, we're getting into the bans. DFM, again, going for the Tom Kench, uh, likely going to ban out the Syndra as well. There it is. Do not ever want to see those out of Rampage. Absolutely. Or not I... interested in playing with this <laughs> Yeah, and it's it's something that's really interesting to see. That Tom Kench was very contested in Rampage versus Unsold stuff, but here they just don't want to see it. And these are the same bans. The same first bands that they did in game one and in game two, and it's you keep the comfort champions off of Evie, Romane, and Dara, and then force them onto something else. Unfortunately, it hasn't panned out as well. But with Gray was the first pick for Paz, this is something that he's been very successful at during the regular season. He played it. He hasn't played it in this matchup between the other uh, between these two teams, 
but he has played it a fair number of times in the regular season, ending the season with a 6.5 KDA on that champion. However, I mean, that does give up the power pick Lulu that we talked about that was so influential in that last game that will again be going over to RPG. Additionally, uh, they also pick up Lucian for Yutora Miyasi, uh, another strong champion for him. And, uh, man, I, I don't know. I I maybe would have liked to see DFM play a little bit riskier with their bands, maybe ban out some of these champions that have shown up, uh, maybe let them out of the through for a game. Uh Right now, I'm just worried for them. I, I don't know if this adaption of adding Graves is going to be enough to swing that matchup in their favor. Yeah, it's very true. And they also pick up the Nautilus as well. We did see this flex down to the support role last game. Uh, they could very easily go to Vivid. I really hope it goes over to Vivid because I want to see more carry potential coming out from Utopo and perhaps a rumble, perhaps that Gragas who just does plenty of damage. The Camille is already banned, but he's also played um, rumble up against RPG before, and it wouldn't be the first time. He did decently well. Uh, he ended the game 1-2-1 one, and one in week 6, game 2, but it's it's hard to say that that was really his fault simply because of how far behind his team got. It was only a 27-minute game, meaning that uh, Rampage just ran over Detonation Focus Me at that time, but we see three very, very comfortable champs coming in for Rampage. Yeah, absolutely happy. Uh, Tussle must be head over heels happy to pick up that Elise, a uh, champion that he's been playing all throughout uh, the LJL, both this week and on Wednesday. Um, again, bands pretty standard. I mean, these teams, uh, they have an idea of what they want these games to look like. They know what they want to ban. Uh, zero bands change for RPG over the course of this entire, uh, you know, game two and game going into game three yeah. dfm and we'll probably see either an oriana or an ari band it is the oriana band meaning we're likely going to see ari picked up right here for robin simply because he's starting to run out of champions he plays meanwhile saros on the other side hasn't really even dipped into his champion pool at all but they are hovering over talia which he did play uh in the series against unsold stuff decently effectively but it uh it is not necessarily the strongest pick that he's had historically yeah um i i do like the idea of taking talia away um saros he did see uh, a lot of success uh in the early game for detonation focused me in that last game uh we saw a great weaver's wall into a into a five-man ultimate at the beginning of the game uh, followed by uh, First Blood, actually, over Ramine, uh with that pick. So I definitely understand taking that away from them. Um, Detonation focused me what's going to be their answer. They're going to pick the Nami for the sustain of the poke uh, in the bottom lane. I would uh, like I would like to see a big carry champion coming out here. Uh, Saros has games on Ari, on Cassiopeia, on Rise, Jace, Corky, Vladimir. Those are all available. He does pick up the Ari. And we saw the reverse of this matchup in our previous game between uh, Ramane and Saros, uh, except it was Ramane with the R, and he did very well, surprisingly very well. And it's interesting to me that they are opting to switch over to Talia there, but we are also seeing a very, very, very comfortable team comp coming up for Rampage. Poppy is one of uh, Evie's most played champions. Tussle has played at least six times over the past seven games that they've played, including this one. Uh, Lulu, Dara's been doing fantastic on that, Ramune's been playing Tilly a lot, and we saw just how effective Yutori Moyashi is on that Lucian. So, you know, if you're going to switch things up, I don't know why you then choose to give your opposing team basically all of their comfort, fit, comfort picks. Yeah, uh, we'll have to see if... Uh, Domination Focus Me can can turn it around. I especially like the Poppy pick uh, in the context of this game. Uh, you have two champions that have very strong dash abilities in both Graves and Ari on the opposing team, being able to activate that uh, Steadfast Presence, uh, stop their ultimates, uh, or stop the Ari ultimate from getting to your backline can absolutely be clutch in this game. And we'll have to see if Evie can pull that off at least once uh, in a yeah. team fight. Yeah, and it is interesting to me that they do opt to give Nautilus over to each one in the top lane. He's had a decent series, but he has been in a situation where he can really necessarily carry for the team. And giving him a Nautilus is, you know, you can carry by being tanky and just doing damage because you won't die. 
but he's also done that with other characters, most notably Gragas. His Gragas has been fantastic over the rest of the season. He ended up having an 11.0 KDA over six wins as Gragas. 11.0, 100% win rate over six games of the competitive season, but he could also do it with like Sion. Sion has fallen out of the meta a little bit, but Gragas definitely hasn't, and opting to give him this Nautilus, which he has not seen that much success on, I'm not sold on it. I don't know if they won this champion select for the first time. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to see ha seeing how these teams match up. One thing that is going in Detonation Focus Me's favor is the fact that uh, Rampage, once again, is stuck on a sort of a two-threat composition. Uh, their only their major damage sources are uh, Yutori's Lucian and Ramade's Talia. Uh, if they only have those two available, we do know that Tussle plays Elise. However, he plays a very tanky Elise. Uh, he likes to go Cinder Hulk into tank items. He appreciates being a support for the team, uh, throwing out cocoons. So he's not as much of maybe that dive uh, assassin mid-game carry uh, that you would maybe see in Western teams. So if Detonation Focus Me makes it to an end-game situation, uh, I think that they have a decent shot of winning this game just because they have an extra carry uh, <laughs> on that Graves. Yeah, absolutely. But it, will it be enough? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sold on it. I think this is the first time Rampage has won the pick ban phase, but again... It doesn't matter how the pick ban phase goes. You can't back it up with your play. And we've seen Rampage back up. They've talked the talk and they've walked the walk. But now let's see if Detonation can block it. <laughs> nice alliteration there, Josh. Like, <laughs> dang, that was that was some quality wordplay. I wish right I could there. freestyle. Then I'd try and pull out something. Just, you know, like, I can't do Hamilton improv, unfortunately. Not yet. Maybe someday. But we're going to be jumping right into game here in just a moment. Uh, we'll have to see exactly what they can do. Can these guys, the founding fathers of the LJL, can they continue, hey. <laughs> can they continue to maintain their rivalry? Or will it just be Rampage finally taking the crown? Let's find out as we get into game. Potentially Shut up, uh, match point. <laughs> these two. but yeah this could be this is very big I'm, it's taking a little bit of time i wonder if there's some technical difficulties going on is there you know this is taking a long time to get into game but i'm sure we want to make sure we see some good league of legends if someone doesn't load in you know there's no point playing a 4v5 at the competitive level you just lost one of your pieces but we're going to be going in let's take another quick gander at how they've these teams have gotten here over the regular season they've had a great a uh, great time. Both teams are eight and two on the match play over the season, and they are only separated by a single game. Um, the three teams that were in the playoffs this time, we had Unsold Stuff, Rampage, and Ditness and Focus Me. They all did a great job in the regular season. They all ended up going eight and two. Actually, they each beating each other one time. The difference being how uh, stompy the games were. For instance, that's why uh, Unsold Stuff and Rampage are below because they ended up going three two on the season in terms of games against Detonation Focus Me. So Detonation Focus Me does have the ability to play out against these teams in the long run, but going down 0-2, if this was regular season, they already would have lost the set. Right. Yeah, and you have to you have to think that there's an immense amount of pressure now. Uh, the winner of this game, uh, the winner of the series, I should say, does advance to the midseason Invitational um, a fantastic prize uh, to play uh, at the international stage and you know now you're down on the ropes can you pull it back um you know can you have the mental fortitude to to not slip up to uh, take your one shot your opportunity no. <laughs> this is bad this is getting really <laughs> bad but uh <laughs> Yeah, the interesting thing, I want to talk a little bit about the Korean imports that this scene has as well, because both these teams have a couple of them. Um, Shrimp, originally, I believe, a Korean player. Uh, Paz, let me double check. I gotta check out, double check my notes. Vivid and Dara are both Korean players. Shrimp was originally from Korea. And then I believe there is one more. It doesn't look like it, but there's plenty of Korean imports on these teams. Now, 
one of the things we talk about in the West a lot of times, English is a very international language, and so, you know, a lot of uh, Korean players have some understanding of English, even if it's not the strongest going in. But when they move to Japan, it's a little bit different. Korean and Japanese actually share a lot more similarities than most people think they do. The grammar is very similar, as well as the vocabulary. So the biggest thing is just substitution of words going in. And so e even if you don't under necessarily understand, you can usually get a pretty good grasp of what's going on in the rest of uh, the conversation as the team is communicating, making different shot calls and moving around and just doing, doing what it is a League of Legends team does. And so it's interesting to see how they're coming in, and both Vivid and Dara have been very successful imports for both of these teams. Yeah, and it's it's interesting too because you know Detonation Focus had this uh, very um, variable, I guess, roster uh, over the course of the season, swapping characters in and out, uh, swapping in and out players. They had Shrimp in for a while. Uh, it looks like Paz is here to stay for this entire series. Um, we have Vivid as well on a Korean import. And, you know, uh, typically, at least in the West, we've also had huge problems when teams have uh, changed too much, too quickly uh, with their team uh, synergy and things like that. However, uh, since Japanese and Korean are uh, closer uh, in, in linguistic um, similarities, it's easier, perhaps, to make that transition quickly and build team cohesion. Yeah, com completely, and it looks like we're starting to, even the Japanese casters are starting to get a little bit antsy as we're going in. Um, let's take a look. Is there anything else we should be talking about in these games right now? The Both of the compositions, you know, they look very solid. I have to give it over to Rampage for this one. Um, let's see, what's the last time that we saw you to pull, or excuse me poppy on either of these characters last time we saw these these guys play uh we did see evie pick up poppy in week six and it ended up being a grueling game a 45 minute game 21 14 in kills ending the game two six and five which is not really what you want to see from your poppy even though i'm sure he took tons of damage throughout the rest of the game it's a uh, it's a very long time since he's last played that in this split or in this uh in this matchup, and it'll be difficult to see exactly what they do. Uh, one of the interesting things, let's take a look about the way that characters have different KDAs between these two teams. And the last time, or the games that these guys have played during the regular season, uh, they ended up having a very similar kill spread between all of the between the two teams. Uh, 73 detonation uh, to 70 kills for Rampage, and they only differ by 3 assists. 184 for Rampage, 187 for detonation. Now, they have very similar numbers of kills, very similar numbers of deaths and assists, but the way that they've been spreading it out has been very different. Uh-oh. Right. Looks like we're getting into game, but real quick, we see the big KDAs coming out for Rampage on Utori and Dara with 6.2 and 4.0 respectively. But the equivalent for Detonation has been 6.1 and 2.3 on Vivid. He has been unfortunately dying a lot when these two teams play against each other. Right. Well, anyways, getting into Game 3 uh, of Detonation Focus Me versus Rampage. Once again, I'm Zane Zenzen Nelson, joined by Josh Joshi Howard. And here we are bringing, you to, bringing it to you live. Game 3 of the LJL Finals, possibly match point. Uh, Rampage up 2-0, looking to finish it off and earn their invite to the mid-season Invitational up against uh, this monstrous team. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's been good. Unfortunately, we don't have another triple Reggie bead coming out from Utapum, but I think he'll be happy with that Doran's ring. Uh, yeah, welcome to Summoner's Rift. Summoner's Rift, Yoko Asa. Here we go. They're gonna go in a lot of bis hits coming out. Man, I'm just I'm just excited that we could finally watch this League of Legends game start. Right. Shoutouts to Star Guardian Poppy. What an absolutely beautiful skin. All uh, of the Star Guardian Riot skins. Riot Games stepping it up, really, with the, <laughs> with the skin game uh, in the last couple of years. Yeah, we see like right here, Earth Nami. What's your what's our favorite skin? I think I do it does have to go over to that Star Guardian Poppy in this game. SKT Elise is always a solid choice, but the Star Guardian skins are just so pretty. Yeah. I mean, I 
I'm always partial to Project Lucian myself, but that's because I spend way too much money on League of Legends, um, <laughs> and I uh, I need to justify my spending habits. Um, so <laughs> I really appreciate that skin. Um, as we see, pretty standard starts for both teams. Uh, does look like both junglers gonna start uh, the Raptor camps to get that early level two. Uh oh, look at the pings going down there. As Utapone looks into the top half, he does unknowingly walk over a ward. Oh, he's just going to get a little bit warded, but that's a little bit of the difference between starting on the top side of the map and the bottom side of the map. You know, the top laner, what exactly they do uh, as the jungler takes their first camp as they pick up level 2. Utapone didn't have anything to do, so I was like, oh, let's go get a ward. Make sure that Tussle does end up here right after he does uh, his camp. And because of that, because of the vision he gains, Paz is going to skip his own buffs and go straight for Tussle's blue buff. Yeah, I really like this adaption, actually, from DFM. I mean, they already expected Tussle to be working in the top lane, and knowing that Evie was going to help, uh, Paz now has to hurry really quickly, though, because it looks like Tussle is going to hit this blast cone. This could be dangerous. Yeah, he Paz is just going to get out, but that's good for them. They are going to be able to get a 3-buff star up on Tussle, and... Elise really suffers from a lack of blue buff in the early game. She uses up a lot of mana, even though she uses a lot. But Dara's taken really low. A little bit more damage could kill him, but Utor is, Utor is the most aggressive ADC in this league by a decent amount. He's not going to let his support die to that. Yeah, and uh, one thing that I want to point out with the Keystones, Dara actually opting, instead of taking Windseeker's Blasting, does go Ooh. for that Thunderlords. Uh, so looking to aggressively punish this bottom lane, uh, rather than playing for the late game. Tussle now invading into this red side. Paz doesn't see. He's, he just sees that his red buff is gone. They don't necessarily see him quite yet, but he's got that spidey sense. He knows that there's a spider right there, and that's a double red buff going over to Tussle. Very bold, very smart play coming out of him, able to pick up that second buff and prevent getting three buffed by the other team. Yeah, uh, and you saw, like, right before... Ooh. Um, wow, a lot of damage. Yeah, it was. Uh, right before Tussle uh, runs in to make that play, uh, Ramane actually shoves up the mid lane so that uh, Steros can't help defend the red buff with Paz. That's really crucial. Uh, allows Tussle to stay alive and relevant yeah, in the early game jungle. A lot of damage going on to Utori right now. Oops, just not going to end in a whole lot. But there they go, going very aggressive onto Vivid. Gets the bubble onto Utori. This could be very big, but he's just going to... Xeros is not in range to do anything beyond that, but a lot of movement speed. We're in a very volatile spot with both junglers on the top half of the map. It's just going to come down to bot lane scale right here. Yeah, uh, Nami, one of the one of the few supports that can match blow for blow with Lulu uh, because of Nami's E uh, giving her um, AD carry just so much damage uh, in addition to a slow on their auto attacks. Yeah, it's almost like a miniature red buff, and we all know just how strong. Uh, uh oh, there we go. Dara support with a 7.0 KDA and 74.2%. I'm assuming that's just over this one series, because he has been doing a fantastic job on both Lulu and the brand he played game one. Yeah. Uh, Stero's going to go ahead and have to back a uh, little bit too low mana to uh, continue to push out against Romney. Probably both can go back, pick up that last chapter, be pretty happy about that. Nothing too crazy going on in that lane. Yeah, this is this is interesting to see how much Evie is stepping up against Utapon as compared to when he was playing yesterday. Or, not yesterday, in the last series that they played. He was very defensive previously, but he's, he's just going in. He's just pressuring his opponent. And I wonder how much of that is just a playstyle thing, if it's a personal strength thing, or if it's just something that you just end up doing when you're just playing against your rivals. Yeah, Paz uh, recognizing that a lot of Rampage had already backed, uh, goes ahead and gets that early deep ward, uh, does spot out Tussle, and will be rewarded with this Grump uh, pretty easily for himself. Star is not very happy about that. Yeah, he's going to deny that. Get a little bit of gold for himself. This could be dangerous, but there's nobody in a position to necessarily follow up. And Paz is going to have to limp away and potentially lose out a little bit as we start going forward. Here we go, Saros is level 6 and starting to move up towards the top half of the map. Probably just going in for some wards, but it could very easily turn into a dive on Evie if he's not careful. Yeah. 
And um, talking about this matchup in the mid lane, or in the top lane, rather, um, Evie definitely has the advantage with the counter pick onto Nautilus. It's very difficult for Nautilus to um, really play aggressive because Evie can always just activate that W and walk away from any fight. Um, however, Yutapon building once again for the... Uh -oh. We're seeing a lot oh, man, of action Weaver's right wall. now. Here comes the Weaver's Wall down below. They're going down. They get a lot of damage onto Vivid, and there goes the knockback. Not quite enough. He is able to flash out of it, but it's still a lot of damage. Two flashes, three summoners blown all together, and that means they can just come back in a couple of minutes, and the Dragon already up. It's an Infernal with Zeros and Vivid down right now in this huge wave about to hit the turret. They should be able to pick that up, that up if they choose to do so. Yeah, um... RPG, although they were unable to secure a kill, they are pretty happy about burning both bot lane flashes with a single ultimate. Um, definitely going to pay dividends for them in the future. Especially since, um, you know, neither of these champions have escapes or, or dashes, really. Uh, so they're definitely uh, weak to a gank. Like, even just a quick cocoon can secure an easy kill in the bottom lane. Absolutely, and we are seeing that coming up right now as we start to see a little bit more pushing around. The top lane is more or less even, uh, simply, you know, being matched Rome for Rome. Romane, you know, that was a great re Weaver's Wall, forcing out both the flashes, but he hasn't been landing his knockups too successfully. We've seen him miss several of them in the mid lane. But Art, there he goes. He hits the first one, and that's a huge amount of damage, making me eat my words. I guess that's a caster's curse in, in League of Legends. But that kind of thing, yeah. that's what we need to see. Here comes Tussle coming up, trying to get onto Utapon. I don't know if he missed that, but there goes the knockup coming out from Evie. We're going to need to see if he's going to land the cocoon. The dread, uh, Depth Charge comes out, getting a lot of damage on the red buff slow is applied. Oh, beautiful block with that uh, W coming out from Poppy. And that is going to be first blood going over to Tussle. Yeah, and we talked about how strong uh, Poppy's steadfast presence was going to be in this game. Coming up clutch there to secure a kill. Uh, first blood Calling for out top A lot of damage onto Vivid. And that's a Zara wow. Seal coming out. There are no yeah, summoners Yatori left. And Zara, once again, they've done this in the first two games of the series as well. Uh, pushing the wave, and then immediately a level uh -oh. 6, pressuring the... Paz player. is in a bad spot, and they see that he's there. They do see Sarah's going for tons of damage going down from Ramana. He's almost out of mana, though, but here comes the rest of Rampage trying to do something. They do blow up the Blast Cone, and that could very well have just saved Paz's life. Yeah, people don't think about it much, but those plants can be really important. Uh, here, let's watch that top lane fight again. Uh, Evie lands the ultimate, uh, and look at this steadfast present. It's so well-timed. Just immediately blocks uh, the kill and will secure the kill for RPG. And another thing to point out is that they did that, uh, they executed that gank right when Rutapon, like, immediately after he had used his teleport, um, so he was denied a significant amount of golden experience, having to walk all the way back up to his top lane. True, and now look at the amount of the item lead that Evie really just has. He has the extra uh, Spirit's Visage. Not Spirit's Visage. Is that what it's called? Sorry, uh, Cowl. Something Cowl. Spectre's Cowl. Spectre's Cowl, My that's friend. what it is. I got you. There we go. But he's got a lot of that, denying a lot of the damages coming out with Nautilus, because Nautilus does a lot of magic damage than the magic resist, plus the passive on that item. It's going to be able to save a lot of damage and basically make it impossible for Yutapon to trade back. Yeah. Uh, Yutapon, though, again, Nobody going for that. these... <laughs> uh, they did see it, though. There's a, there's a blue ward right there. Uh, <laughs> happens to the best of us, though. Uh believe you i've been there missing uh, missing abilities on scuttle crab always feels bad yeah and then we always make sure looking for this incredible drake but yeah they're gonna do that they saw that zarostin vivid backed just a moment ago so they should be able to get this pretty easily with paths on the other side of the map they do manage to take the first infernal drake at 10 minutes yeah uh, rampage really smart decision making there they also uh because uh -oh. evie had shoved out the bottom lane Big flash coming out from Tussle. That's not the end of it, though. Saras has one more charge. Doesn't... Uh, one more charge. Doesn't manage to land the charm. Both the E and the flash coming out from Tussle in order to keep him out of that. One or the other probably would have been enough, but if you take both of them, you're definitely going to be out of there. And with no ultimate left on Saras, this is a little bit more dangerous. Yeah. 
uh, I want to I want to talk a little bit about Rampage's timing there. That was really clever. Um, they had shoved up the top lane, uh, and Evie ran into. Uh, oh, Weaver's Wall coming over. There's no ultimate for Saras, but the Weaver's Wall just doesn't quite get far enough. And Evie's taking a lot of turret shots right now. He might be going down. One more turret shot? Will it be enough? No, nah, the ignite's not going to take a single more time. But that was wow. That was scary. Yeah, Ramune, uh, a little misjudging his Weaver's Wall just a little bit, not able to fully close off uh, the distance. Had he been able to do so, that would have been almost certainly a kill because Evie could use the body slam to stun Saros into the wall. Uh-oh, teleport's coming out from Utapon. Evie's already down here, though. This is a 3v3. Uh-oh, there's a cancel from Utapon. This is a 4v3 now. He gets the triple knockup, but the title wave's gonna come out. Dara tries to get out, misses everything. It's bubbled up, but Utor is going uh, really big, but the exhaust's not gonna do a whole lot. This is still here, and here comes Romney around the back. Everybody's low, but there's a massive wave coming up here. Just needs a little bit more damage onto all these members. There's no teleport coming out from Utapon. They're trying to get it. There's a first one going down. There's a second one. Zeros is the last one, and that is the triple kill going over. Saros around the backside does have his ultimate up, but against five members, I don't know if he's gonna have the confidence to do that yeah really well played by by rampage uh you can see their confidence uh in their decision making growing over the course of the series uh now they're the ones that are making the four man or five man dives in the bot lane um they know that they're up the game they know that they can uh really put the pressure on detonation focus me and they're showing it right here yeah, and that's what happens when you hold all the chips. They're able to just raise the stakes, and they just keep pushing forward and forward. And if they keep doing that, as long as it doesn't go terribly wrong, they should be able to just continue pushing for this game, and it could very easily snowball this game out of control. Already a 3k gold lead for them, too, at 13 minutes. Uh, along with that first Infernal Drake, that's going to allow them to scale up into the late game. Um... DFM going ahead and rotating their bottom lane into the mid lane to try and get some pressure on this mid lane turret, as well as secure some easy farm for Xerost. But I have to say, they need to find uh, some sort of advantage here and quickly before the game sort of falls out of their favor. Yeah, and this mid lane might not be the place to find it right now. Yutori already has the Blade of the Rune King completed up on Xerost, as well as uh, you know, a very, very strong support in Dara, so this could be very difficult. Mid lane is well known for being very safe, so it shouldn't be difficult to keep Xerost safe, but I don't think he'll be able to get much of an advantage. Just trading even might be all that they want to do. Yeah, and you can see how uh, advantages in the professional level uh, really start to snowball into vision advantages. If you look over at uh, RPG's inventories, you see a grand total of five control wards sitting there waiting to be used uh, on the next dragon or perhaps rift herald that they want to take. Yeah, this is uh, it's starting to look grim. There comes another Weaver's Wall. There's no flash on Zeros. He's stuck in the corner, but the tidal wave is going to keep him safe. Just going to have to huddle in the corner. Does not want to build a snowman. <laughs> yeah, uh, so far Nami turning out to be a, a potent tool, uh, a, a beacon of hope in a sea of despair <laughs> for DFM. Um, so far being used to great effect to just completely eliminate uh, some of the aggression from RPG. Here comes Evie around the side, gonna knock a couple people away, just knocks one away. This could be a big fight, but Dar is taking a lot of turret shots. He's still taking a lot of damage. He has to use a wild growth on himself. Saros misses the ultimate over the wall and now he finally gets around. Gets the charm down on Tussle taking a lot of damage. Utapones there. Dar is already dead. The death charge goes on to Evie. That's two picked up right there for Zeros. He's getting another one and that's a third kill right now. Traded one back. There goes Piaz. He's not going to be able to do a whole lot, but Evie needs to find a way out and there's so many members of the other team trying to come find him. I don't know if he'll be able to do it, but he is taking up a lot of their time. Yeah, definitely uh, miscommunication there on a rampage. Um, they wanted, Evie wanted to look around the side, get a huge uh, hammer ultimate to knock some members away while they take the turret. However, uh, Dara ends up taking turret aggro and not able to escape. Um, and then Detonation Focus Me just able to take advantage of the situation, pick up three kills, and uh, shorten the gold lead down to 2,000. And with this turret going down in just a moment, they'll be able to shorten it even more. Evie does manage to escape, simply because he has a level 2 boots already. Nobody on Focus Me has that 
already, but he does lead them right to the bottom lane, so the time that he wasted isn't nearly as wasted as they might have thought, since he is able to end up picking something up for themselves anyway. But it is... Right. But with the back or with the back timers going down right now, and the uh oh, cocoon goes out. Utopon flashes it. This should be a pretty easy escape at this point. But the next dragon coming up in just a moment, they should be able to secure it pretty easily. Utopon's gonna have to back spend the gold he just picked up, and probably just seed this cloud drake here. Yeah, without teleport available, uh, detonation focus me. Okay, to give that one up. Um, obviously, they'd like to contest every every inch of ground that they can. Uh, however, they just aren't quite in the position. Uh, need to have members up in the top lane to soak up farm. Yeah, are not it, able to contest the dragon. In this game, the cloud dragon isn't the most important objective you need to be worried about. Uh, they would really like to contest. If it ever comes up, they definitely want to take an ocean dragon from themselves or a mountain dragon. Mountain dragons are always useful with double ADC teams because it means you can take the Baron very quickly. But right now, they... They don't need to worry about the extra move speed so much in this game. It's not as pivotal as it might be. Yeah, I agree with you there, Josh. Uh, looking across the board, 17 minutes in, 3 to 5 kills. Uh, still holding steady onto that 2k gold lead for Rampage. A um, couple of important item thresholds coming out. Uh, at this point in the game, between Evie and Utapon, neither player is really in a position where they can uh, kill each other. Uh, and for the rest of the game, they'll just be continuously split pushing against one another, not really able to uh, secure kills, uh, just be by virtue of how tanky their champions are. Um, so expect to see a lot more focus on teleports and a lot more focus on 5 on 5 team fights between both of these players. 100%, and with all the outer turrets down except for Rampage's middle turret, we're going to start seeing people move around as a group more often, making these teleport advantages even more powerful, and Evie has one right now, and that's why we see him split a little bit from his team uh, as they start to look for oh, vision control. RPG has a very strong ability to pick champions with the polymorph, with the um, cocoon coming out from Elise, and just the amount of time that Evie can soak up from an opposing member, and we're, we're seeing it right now. They're starting to threaten towards this top lane turret. It looks like they are going to start up the Rift Herald, something we don't see a whole lot. Something, I'm curious as to who they give it to, it would probably be either Elise or the Lucian. I think it would be best on the Lucian, and I'm not sure that this is something Detonation Focus Me wants to contest that hard. They are going in, though. Yutapong gets taken up. The Weaver's Wall does a great job separating the team. One of the best we've seen so far. Zeros is doing a lot of damage around the side, but it's going to be... Uh-oh, there it goes. Utopo misses the dredge line, gets the depth charge onto Tussle. Not sure that's what you want, but you do charm it up. He's so low. Evie's going to be the last one on the team, and he hammers out two of the enemy opponents. Dara is the only one nearly falling. But nobody dies. Yeah, I mean, this is sort of more uh, reminiscent of the dancing team fight that we talked about, that we saw a lot of on Wednesday. Um, neither team... Uh, able to find the engaged kills that they need to to secure a kill. So both teams uh, sort of dance around, use a lot of their abilities, don't end up killing anyone. Uh, Rampage does secure the Rift Herald for themselves, which is a great pickup for them. Uh, but all in all, an even sort of duel between both teams. Yeah, it's a... Uh... Like you said, we see a lot of dancing around in the Japanese league, not just between these two teams, but it's a fairly common thing. And that was very archetypal of what we tend to see between these two teams. Yeah, we can we can even watch this again. Uh, Yutapon, interestingly, you know, this Weaver's Wall is incredible. Ramane, uh on point with this Weaver wall, Weaver's Wall in the game, somehow misses this really clutch dredge line and then takes so much damage that he's unable to... Um, really join the fight. A great ultimate from Evie splits the fight once again, uh, and DFM just not able to secure any kills. Yeah, and Evie does pick up the Glimpse of the Void, and now he finds Utapon, and again, there we see even with the amount of gold that these two uh, tanky top laners have, they're not going to be able to do a whole lot with it. Simply, even the Glimpse of the Void doesn't do that much damage at this point, especially on that character. Tussle is looking for Saros. The ward is going to get him out just fine. But Evie's in a bad spot right now. He doesn't know it, but there's so many members right there. Utapone not coming up just in time. Just going to be able to clear that pink ward as Evie moves around and tries to make himself an annoying little yordle. Yeah. 
Uh, Rampage, though, uh, doing a good job of not being complacent uh, with their advantage, right? Uh, they are continuing to move around the map, are going to pressure and take this uh, Tier 1 top turret, um, have been continuing to buy uh, control wards and try and choke uh, Detonation Focus Me out of vision, especially around these important objectives like Baron and Dragon. Yeah, with Dragon coming up once again in just over a minute. This could be very big. I don't remember what Dragon it was. Everybody's going to give us a quick glimpse into that. Willie, please? No. <laughs> it it shall get... forever remain a mystery. Oh, there it goes. It is another Cloud Drake. Again, not the most pivotal thing, but giving over two Cloud Drakes to your opponents starts to make a lot of issues in terms of roaming around the map because they will be so fast with their pick composition. First one, not a huge deal. Second one is... 50 movement speed given over to everyone on Rampage, and that's uh, not something you want to see. Yeah. It does look like the game has sort of stabilized once again, though. Uh, again, a common pattern that you see in League of Legends uh, is, like, both teams will... Uh, whichever team has an early advantage will take all three of the Tier 1 outer turrets. Um, and oh, this Weaver's is a very wall. easy thing to do. Not yet. Looking for it. Yeah, thinking wrong. about it. Thinking about it. Colon thinking colon. But it's uh, <laughs> not quite what they wanted to do. They don't see plenty of members of Detonation Focus Me, and so they weren't confident pulling the trigger. And with the dragon coming up, if you're not confident, oftentimes it's better to just not do it. Additionally, with how much how tanky Utapon is at this point, it's very difficult to secure a kill with only two members uh, hacking away at him. They yeah, decide not to go coming with it. around. They are starting to get a little bit more vision control. But there goes the Weaver's Wall. It is going to separate the team. Utapon and Paz on the wrong side. They're going to miss the Cocoon. That might be it. They're not able to get a whole lot of damage onto him. He's very tanky. But there goes the return. The Dredge Line flashes through. It gets three members. The uh, Tidal Wave takes another one. But already Detonation Focus Me has backed out quite a bit. They're not able to find a whole lot. That's actually the Poppy Ultimate. But they're going to come back and try and recontest. Utapon, very tanky at the front. But here's Evy on the backside. Gets a lot of damage onto Vivid, but he's charmed up. Pulls Utapon back. And there's a team that Wild Growth is going to keep him a little bit longer alive. But he's not going to be able to stay alive a whole much longer. But he will. They get the Cloud Drake. And that's all five members still alive. A dancing fight once again. And nobody dies. Wow. What a a weird, uh, you know, what, what a weird interaction between these two. I have to give credits for Rampage, though. They're doing such a good job of separating out uh, Detonation Focus Me and preventing them from having the engages that they want to have. Um, Ramune, another fantastic Weaver's Law. Uh, Detonation Focus Me now sort of on the run. Evie's on the far side. This is a sketchy position for them to be in. Yeah, it's already shoving up the mid lane, too. They had the inside track originally to try and move towards something, potentially the Baron, but they aren't confident enough to pull the trigger, and now they give Rampage the inside track as they start to put a lot of damage towards this mid lane turret, this will go down very quickly. Yeah. Um, going back uh, to that dragon... Teleport. Utapon's coming back around, Rampage hasn't had a chance to back, but all of Detonation Focus Me come has. He does have the dread line available, he gets it down, he's looking for a fantastic death charge, not able to find it yet. Evie's doing so much damage right here in the middle, and he's still not dying. They're just trying to find anyone they can, Utori comes around, but here comes the Weaver's Wall once again, separating Zeros and Vivid from the rest of the team, this could be what they need. Tussle finds a cocoon on the pads, they're getting a lot of damage, and he bursts down the graves, Tussle gets a wild growth, is taking a lot of damage, Zeros is coming back into the fight with Vivid, but there's already two members dead. So many members on Rampage are already so low, and all the carries... Uh-oh, there's Zeros trying to do a lot of damage. Don't go to that! We want to see the rest of the fight! Zeros manages to get out for a little bit, but... Evie doesn't manage to pick it up and ends up going down! Wow. What? Again, Ramane with another incredibly clutch Talia ultimate. He is playing on fire this game. Uh, once again, separating one or even two or three members... Uh, of Detonation Focus Me away from the fight so they can't join. Uh, picking up an early advantage uh, through the use of that ultimate is able to eventually secure a kill here um, with uh, Utapon sort of stuck out from his team. Here that is again. Look at that wall. Uh, completely zoning David and Zeros off the fight. And then so much damage goes down onto Paz uh, as well as Utapon. Um, yeah, and here we see what happens to Zeros. Nah, not quite able to do it. 
He does manage to end up getting out, but at the beginning of the fight, we also see so much damage being put down to onto Vivid as he takes nearly an entire culling from Yutari. He was sitting there at around 300, 400 health, not able to really get into the fight at all, simply because he'll just get one shot by anyone with actual damage. Yeah. And I mean, this is the this is the high point of Rampage's sailing as well. Um, you know, uh, Utori has finished the tank busting duo of both the Blade of the Rune King and the um, and the Black Cleaver. Now looking to pick up probably a Phantom Dancer to uh, allow him to further kite. Uh, Ramune on a two item power spike. Now working on a death camp. Uh, they just have so much burst potential out of their carries at this point. And uh, with a lead already, that's really scary to walk into when you're coming close to these objectives. Completely. And we're, we're not seeing the same item spikes really coming out from Detonation Focus Me. They're not that far behind in gold, only about 4,000, but they're definitely behind a lot of other things. They're going to try looking for a little bit here. Not able to find a whole lot. But if we're talking about Saros going really massive, the faker of japan this isn't this isn't what we need from him uh oh there we go Emmy's going very deep taking a good chunk of damage i don't know that was weird but uh he's gonna get that in and they're gonna start moving towards the baron they have plenty of pink wards available to try and deny the vision romney is going to continue towards the top and this could be where they try and look for it they get the dredge line of tussle taking a little bit of damage he has a guardian angel so it's not super scary but there goes the charm onto evie that's some good chunks onto the front line weaver's wall keeps paz on the wrong side use the collateral damage to get onto the other side but the calling is still gonna do a lot of damage for both paz and utapone as they start moving towards the mid lane turret yeah fantastic use of collateral damage from paz to jump over the wall even after failed the quick draw uh will put them in position to take this if he's looking he gets a good charge onto Utpo, taking a lot of damage but he's gonna knock graze out of the fight paz is all the way on the other side saros is doing a lot of damage gets the q across multiple members utorius goes down tussle is gonna be popped into ga ramane he has to use the uh, cleanse to get out and that's saros going big right here tussle and evie do manage to get away but with both carries dead they're gonna be able to push up into the mid line that's potentially an inhibitor or the baron depending on how they choose to fight this yeah really great play by detonation focus me Fantastic bubble from Vivid picks up two, both Ramane and Yutori Mayasi dead. Uh, with no carries, Rampage doesn't have the damage to defend this push. This will be at least this turret, likely this turret, as well as the inhibitor for DFM. Yeah, Evie's trying to be annoying. They do get just the turret and they're going to have to back out. They're afraid of Yutori coming back up and the wrath of that Lucian. They're just going to be able to back out and hopefully reset a little bit. But here, let's take another look at it. Yeah, so here we see they, they sneak around and grab the dragon. Uh, and then uh, RPG spends all of their abilities onto Utapon. This fantastic wave into bubble combo locks up both Utori and Tussle, uh, brings Utori down to the brink of death. Uh, Saros will finish off the kill onto Ramane. Tussle flashes over the wall to safety. But man, what a fantastic play by Vivid. Uh, the wave followed by the bubble just absolutely obliterating Rampage's uh, backline. His team did a great job following up on it as well. Just getting the CC down doesn't necessarily mean a lot. This is exactly what you'll see in something like Overwatch, right? Where Reinhardt will get, or Zarya is a great one, get the gravity orb onto five members. But it, it doesn't matter if you're going to get that and nobody else is there to support you. But they had a team there and they were able to capitalize on it very well, picking up two members and knocking that GA down off of Elise and opening up the base of Rampage for the first time in this series. Yeah, uh, definitely a positive highlight for Detonation Focus Me. Uh, it looks like right now they're trying to secure vision over that Baron Pit. Uh, looks to be their next uh, major goal of the game if they can either take the Baron or win a fight around the Baron, and then take Rampage's inhibitor, uh, they stand a good chance to win this game. Indeed, and with the Ocean Dragon now available, that's also a really big potential, uh, what do you call it, objective for this team if they do try and take it. We are seeing a lot of item breakpoints coming out for Focus Me as well right now. There's two items full onto Nautilus, there's two, nearly three, onto our end. I wonder if they're a wait to hit those item breakpoints before Rampage hits their next ones, or if they're going to try and force something in the meantime. The Dragon is available, the Baron is available, and they're going to have to be very careful with how they move with the amount of vision that these two teams dedicate in order to stay keep themselves safe. Yeah. Ramane sitting 
away from his team. He wants to look for a, another Weaver's Wall to split the team. Does look like he's going to go clear the wave of the top side. Um, as both teams sort of hover around this mid lane, uh, anticipating Oops. a fight. Oops. Oops. <laughs> That's a sad spider. <laughs> it's okay, though. Repel's a pretty good ability. Yeah, it is. And we're going to get into a very interesting thing where both teams are pretty even in gold. The biggest thing separating these two teams is going to be those three dragons. And with Rampage the first to the draw, this could be very big. It's already down to half. They're going to secure that. No problem. Yeah, dragon number four uh, for Rampage. Once again, uh, just really putting you know a fair amount of priority on these dragons. Um, playing really well around them. Uh, finding an opportunity to take the dragon without giving up Baron control is really key and sometimes difficult to do uh, when you get this late into the game. But they've been doing that and doing it with style. Heavy Fancer is a fight here. This is not going to be a fast fight, especially with the all the tank items between these two characters. But hey, you're welcome to try. <laughs> yeah, both, uh, both uh, Nautilus and... Poppy even more solidly in the can't kill each other camp now that they've both finished uh, almost three items. And the next step, we're going to have to be very careful as they move around. They're just, again, dancing around each other. This isn't an uncommon thing, not only in the Japanese scene, but, you know, around the rest of the world. Evie looks to be looking for some kind of teleport right now. Yeah, he has a couple good targets. There's a um, ward uh, on the bottom half of the map that he could teleport to. Uh, however, DFM playing very cautiously, very conservatively, don't want to overextend uh, beyond their vision. RPG now looking to clear out as many wards as possible before they bait this Baron. Scuttle Crab goes over to Rampage. There's a lot of wards that are dying. I think if people were cheering for that, it would be a, a lot of cheering. There goes the Weaver's Wall. Separates Paz. He's just going to quick draw over the wall, though. Just not going to do a whole lot. Getting a decent amount of damage done onto Utapon, but not a whole lot. Dredge line. Barely missing. Yeah. Both teams now looking to looking to find the engage that's going to win them the fight. And maybe uh -oh. take the game. Tussle separate. There's a lot of damage going on to Utapone. There's a lot of damage going to Evi. The true damage coming out from Saras is doing a lot. He's knocked out of the fight, and Utapone's getting a lot of damage put onto him. Paz goes forward, uses the collateral damage, which is not going to be enough. Paz is again taking damage from Utori, but the bubble's going to be really big. Evi's already low. They're going to have to find a little bit more to get back in. Another dredge line should be able to find it. They're looking for it. They can't quite find it. But that is definitely a win going over to Detonation Folks. I mean, it looks like they're going to head directly to the Baron. They're going to force Evi to TP. Yeah, I really like this play. Um, even if they don't take the Baron right here, uh, forcing the teleport out of Evi in order to defend this is going to be huge. But However, Yutori running down the mid lane wants to take the turret. Uh, oh man, this is really tense. Focus me, uh, what do you call it? Committed too late, and now Evi is going to complete the teleport. He's found out by so many members. The dredge lane does not land on him, but he's going to kite. He's a very tanky URL. Dar's on the opposite side. They could easily turn and pop him down, but now they're in a bad spot. Tussle goes in, gets a lot of damage. Zeros is almost taken down, and Paz is almost taken down immediately as well. Tussle's going to have to find a, his way out. He's taking a lot of damage, just not quite ending it. Utapone taken once again by the steadfast presence from Poppy, and they're so low. Once again, here comes Seros. Utori's going in. He's trying to get the damage. Evi's on to Seros. This is such a chaotic fight. Utori finally picks up the one. There's a two. That's a double kill for Utori. There's a triple kill for Utori. Just kidding, that goes over to Tussle, but there's a teleport getting off from Utapone. You can call him so as. But that <laughs> is going to be the Baron and a massive team fight finally going over Rampage's way, and that could be the key that they need to finally open up this game and end the series 3 0. Yeah, Rampage really playing that smartly on a macro level. They force, they run down mid lane to take down the quick turret, uh, force. Uh, detonation focus me to sort of run towards the Baron, and then they get stuck in this choke in the river uh, where they can't fight very effectively. Uh, their carries are left unprotected. Zeros and Saris uh, go really, really low uh, before Rampage is even like touched, and that will secure them the Baron as well as the bottom or the top tier two turret. And they're they're still going. They still want blood. 
Yeah, they're still here. I don't know how much more they'll be able to get, but Paz is looking. If he can stop the backs a little bit, it might be an opportunity for Detonation to find something with the Empowered Recall here from Rampage. There's not a whole lot of chance of that. Detonation needs to clear out a little bit of vision, and with a minute 30 still on the other Dragon, let's take a look at this one more time. Yeah, so we see here this teleport gets completed by Evie, and he's sort of stuck out all by himself, but he's just so tanky. Uh, DFM gets sort of channeled into this choke, a great stun, uh, gets Paz down really low, and now Paz and Zeros are sort of stuck, or Paz and Zeros are stuck on the edge. They can't really continue to engage, um, and they're stuck over here. Yutori is just free reign to just carry on and focus down targets, picks up Zeros as well as Ceres, um, and they end the fight 3-1. Yeah, here he goes again. Weaver's Wall doesn't separate anybody, but Yutapon is in a potentially bad spot. Vivid gets popped in and bursted! Evie and Tusser are still looking for Paz as he's around the side. They do get the cocoon, and he's got no flash, nowhere to go, and that is going to be two picks for, for Rampage. They have the Baron buff. They have the top lane inhibitor already dead, and they have minion waves pushing. This is going to be them pushing potentially for the game. Yeah, a 10,000 gold lead, 6 to 12. It's going to be really tough for Detonation Focus Me to uh, survive this push. Will they be able to do it? Let's see here. Zerost yeah. and Saras are still alive. They have to go direct for the Nexus turrets. Who needs the other inhibitor? They're doing a lot of damage to Utapone. Look at how much damage he's taking. The calling onto his back is not going to let him get away. Evie not able to find anything further. Wild Growth isn't doing a whole lot. Saros is looking for something. Come on, Faker of the Easter. Nah, that was, I don't even know what I was saying there. But here comes Saros. He's taking a lot of damage. He's getting caught up by Evie. Ten stunned against the wall. That is going to be Utori taking that one more time. Zeros and Vivid are trying to do what they can to keep their team in the game. But it's already the Nexus turret is being focused down by Utori. And that is going to be a 3-0 Rampage over Detonation. Wow. Rampage Gaming stepping it up. Winning your champions of the LJL this season. 3-0 will advance to the mid-season invitational and look at those guys they are ecstatic what a feat uh defeating their long-standing rivals detonation focus me 3-0 that has to feel good in such a devastating fashion too none of those games were particularly close outside of the early game they had a good lead in two of them and in that last one a single fight can tear the game wide open but that's what happens when you're dancing around each other for such long periods of time you're just sitting there waiting for each other and look at how devastated Zeros is right there yeah i mean still though uh second place in a budding league is definitely nothing to to shake you know a stick at these guys still have to feel good about their performance uh they had a solid run throughout the season. Finished 8-2, and two, if I'm correct. They only lost to the, the two other top teams uh, in the in the entire split, so they have to feel good about that at least. But what a convincing win by Rampage. I'm looking forward to see how uh, they progress as a team going forward. Yeah, and they are going to be going to the mid-season Invitational. These two teams did a fantastic job in playing, and Rampage just showing just how strong of a team they truly are as they move forward. Yutori Moyashi doing a fantastic job working with the team, and we saw Evie, Ramane, Tussle, and Dara all stepping up. It was not just the one-man show outside of the first game, which was very much a one-man show, but the... <laughs> wait, no, yeah, except it was Ramune. If I remember correctly, yeah. but we're going forward, and that's what we needed to see from these teams. We were talking about the multiple threats coming out of Detonation, but they just never came online. And Rampage, which normally is only a one or two threat team, is able to get three or four threats going through. Every with some fantastic initiations. Romney, this first Weaver's Wall leaved a little bit to be desired, leaving a gap in the walls, but after that, those were some of the best Talia walls I've seen in the competitive League of Legends in quite a while. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, I I have to shout this out because I'm a, I'm a Talia main myself uh, when I play in the lowly league of Platinum. Um, but, like, watching that was really inspiring. He had such a great position, uh, such uh, great aptitude, like, understanding where and when to split fights to find the advantage uh, and just completely nullify one or two members of Detonation Gaming's uh, team. And that was all that they needed to win those fights. I do want to give uh, 
Sweet kill. Thanks there, John. But uh, I do want to give a shout out to the coach for Detonation Focus Me. He had some fantastic pig band phases throughout the tournament and really showing how well they understood their opponents. Unfortunately, they weren't able to necessarily back it up with a little bit more and those are really nice keys. Yeah, uh, champion championship keychains that they're going to be wearing, I'm sure, for the rest of the season and for the rest of the year. As well as, I mean, like, look at that, look at that cup. That cup's beautiful, and you can like actually carry it. You know, it's not <laughs> like the the Summoner's Cup that's like hey. seven thousand pounds. No I hate on the Summoner's one. Cup. It's a beautiful piece of work. But there we go. We do have your champions lifting up the LJL Cup for it. The second consecutive split. They again they did win in the summer split up against uh, Detonation Focus Me, and now they're going to be continuing their reign as the defending champions of League of Legends in Japan. Uh oh, they <laughs> they look scared. They almost dropped that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, like it's loud. You're excited. You, your adrenaline's still pumping. If you hear like the loud confetti, I absolutely understand that. That would be me. <laughs> Like, oh no, Dara's head. <laughs> uh, they'll get it on there eventually. They'll get it on there. It was a, it was a great series once again. Congratulations to Rampage. Uh, Evie in the top lane, Tussle in the jungle, uh, Ramane in the mid lane, and then of course, some of your big stars, Utori and Dara, down there at ADC and support. Yeah. Are we going to have... Um, did we ever... We had a potential uh, translator who was going to come and join us and maybe see if we were going to get it to... sounds like not, but ah, well. still, it was a great way to end the night. Some great League of Legends being played, some very explosive, very dancing fights. I'm really excited to see what these guys will bring as they start to play on the international stage a little bit more. Yeah, me too. Um, and, you know, look at those smiling faces there. So happy, uh, have a lot to say about that match and um, how grateful they are to, to be there. I'm sure. I man, they just they just stepped up as a team. You saw them grow. You know the rampage that I saw on Wednesday night uh, in the semifinals. I was not honestly convinced by. Uh, they had some some interesting plays that didn't uh, feel that cohesive. It definitely felt like it was the Utori show, uh, and he was calling all the shots, and he was carrying every single game uh, coming out the clutch victories. But here, you saw all five of them working together, uh, and, and that's what be beautiful, solid, clean League of Legends is about. Yeah, and it's uh, they clearly had so much confidence going into game three they were able to try things that they would we would not have seen rampage try otherwise but on the other hand detonation focus me was not in a position to really push anything they seemed so shaken and just looking for whatever they could find to bring them back in the game and that's really what happens in these long sets is you need the ability to remain very cool very collected and able to make the biggest impactful plays that you can without necessarily risking too much yeah i i completely agree with you josh there now an interesting thing that, that we don't get to see but we'll have to speculate is uh the way that rampage and unsold stuff played that was a very close set between the two teams but this one rampage just ran over detonation and so the question becomes detonation focus me and rampage which are officially your first and second place teams how would unsold stuff do up against detonation if they were to play yeah i i have to wonder too i would imagine that uh, detonation would continue to uh, ban you know very similar champions right we probably would have seen the tom kench ban probably would have seen the syndra ban so i could definitely see um detonation playing very similar uh, team compositions like they did in game one and game two um but yeah i i don't know it, it definitely would have been a different series i would have perhaps liked to see a, an alternate universe <laughs> uh, but unfortunately that's not in the cards uh for this season of the ljl 
Yeah. Still, though, a great finish to a yep. great season. We will have to wait for the summer split to begin for these guys. Uh, everyone but the winning team will be going into the off season very soon, and we could very easily see some large roster shakeups between these teams. I'm really looking forward to what the summer is going to bring. <laughs> They're very excited. That. They're very excited, shouting out MSI, they'll be able to go play a little bit more. And just the ability to play against international teams, we can't talk about how important that is. I believe we're going to get a couple of replays here in just a moment, so let's talk through those. Yeah, there we go, and just we see just how much, how much strength there is coming out of Rampage, just unable to do anything wrong here as Utoria starts to go massive, gets over the wall, comes back, and gets all the damage with the cleanse, with the flash, with using everything but he's so confident in his own abilities and there we go even with the even with that staying away from the time bombs yeah that was a huge huge turnaround in game one uh just able to clean up uh, after that baron play and then again here um rpg taking this fight um and just obliterating dfm uh with great focus fire onto the single targets I just kind of want to watch this, but yeah, it's a it's been a great time, everyone. Once again, this has been Joshua, Joshi Howard, and Zane Zen Zen Nelson. Thank you for joining us, and hopefully, we'll see you soon. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I really enjoyed doing this with ten out of ten. Watch more League of Legends again. Um, <laughs> tons of fun commentating with you, Josh. Uh, it's been a blast, and we'll hope to see you guys next time. All right, everyone. Well, enjoy the rest of your evening, and congratulations once more to Rampage. This is Josh Yoshi Howard and Zane Zinzin Nelson signing out. Peace.